Hey everyone, you're listening to the official podcast of 4PlayerNetwork.com. Check us out at that address for everything you need to know about our community, monthly giveaways, and nightly live streams. You can even support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash 4player. And last but not least, you can catch the live recordings of these podcasts every single Thursday night on our Twitch channel. We hope to see you there. Enjoy. do this welcome to the show everybody this is four player podcast episode 535 my name is nick henderson i am joined this evening by nolan hedstrom how's it going everybody christopher davis that's me and nobody nobody our first our first podcast of 2018 our first regular podcast of 2018 and it just so happens to be a three-player podcast so i don't know what to do with myself we're not gonna have we're not gonna have crispy here to to keep us in check. We're not gonna have crispy here to regale us with weird movie knowledge that we never would have known otherwise. I don't know, and to get strangely confrontational about certain topics. Strangely, well, he'll be back next week, so we'll talk about that. Or we'll talk about next week. We're gonna have a lot of stuff to talk about. We're gonna next week. We're gonna have fucking uh, Dragon Ball Fighter Z, mm-hmm. the Inpatient, uh, Metal Gear Survive. But this week is a little more low key, probably probably a pretty uh, news heavy episode. But we do have a few things we want to talk about, kind of at the front of the episode. No one's going to talk about the latest DLC for Zelda Breath of the Wild, the Champions Ballad. Is that what yeah, it's, it's called? The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, the Champions Ballad DLC two. <laughs> it's fucking <laughs> ridiculous. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about Persona Five. But before we do that, a couple I'll things. I'll talk about Persona Five too. Oh, sweet. I've been playing that. Are you really? Oh. I haven't been playing. You hadn't. You didn't finish it last year, right? Fuck no. Oh, how many? How how much time did you put into that game? Like fifty hours. Damn. Um. Anyways, what? Uh, a couple things before we get too far into this. Um. I don't know. One in the second segment during the community segment, we will announce the winners of our game giveaway. Who were drawn from the surveys, the game of the year surveys and highlight of the year surveys that we've mm-hmm. had running for the past couple weeks. Um. So stick around for the second segment. You may have won a free game if you, in fact, took our polls, which I hope you all did. I'm sure everyone here did. I'm sure. I'm, I'm absolutely sure of it. We had a lot of entries. Uh, we did? Yeah. Cool. All right. Uh, Discord, of course, I want to take a moment to remind everybody out there. It's 2018. Your New Year's resolution should be to join the four-player Discord if you have not already done so. You can find it at discord.gg slash player. Uh, if you stop in, please take a moment to introduce yourself in, in the introductions channel. We'd love to hear from you and say hi. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's very active. We've had people in there having all kinds of great, wonderful conversations in there. So we'd love you to be a part of that. Jaeger went into it today and he organized it. He did. He did I organize. That, yeah. There's nothing wrong with a little organization. Yeah, um, I like. I'm I'm quite fond of organization myself. But the thing is, I wish it was like per person instead of like the entire Discord. For everybody. Well, you're gonna have to take that up with Jaeger. I, I can't take it up with Jaeger because I mean it's it's done for everybody. My problem is with Discord itself, not. Wait, what's your problem with Discord? Sorry. That you can't or, that it, like when you can't. organize it, it organizes it for everybody. Mm. Yeah, there. it's not just like how you see it. But mm. hey, we're not here to talk about what we don't like about Discord because we want you to join our Discord and for, talk about Tide Pods and talk about Tide Pods. That was a very confusing thing. I'm glad you cleared that up for I'm me. I'm still confusing. Do you uh, remember Bod? The body wash? From Bod? like the 90s? I think so. Yeah, there's all those weird commercials that were always like kind of like black and white and they were like, hot Bod. No, I do I, I do want your that. Bod. And that was like their whole thing was like a lady sensually talking over guys who were like playing basketball and sweating and it showed like they look like fucking like Windex, but it was like body wash. <laughs> Just spraying themselves with Windex. Yeah. Oh my god. That reminds me. I, I had a See, see Deputy Dangle knows. Yeah. This is I had a salad this past weekend, right? Okay. And I had sal- salad dressing that was in a spray bottle. That is weird. What? That is and it looks like a it's not like a it's like the, the it looks like the kind you like like perfume. Sure, like you yeah, spritz. Yeah. You mm-hmm. spritz it on there. It was, it was like very a really strange. thin vinaigrette or something. Or? Yeah, I mean, it was yeah, supposed to like that. it was supposed to reduce the amount of oil mm. in in the salad I dressing. Just think that would be it a just ended up making it like just like wet. I don't know. <laughs> it, was, it was weird. It was kind of cool. I've never seen that before. Just thought I'd point that out there. 
Well, that's the most exciting thing that's happened to me this past week. <laughs> week how about y'all? I saw a bunch of movies. I saw I Tanya. That was pretty good. I saw three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri. I want to see both of those. That was pretty good. I don't I, even know what that's about. Honestly, it's about you haven't seen, awesomeness. How have you not seen the trailer for three billboards out of what is it? It's three very billboards easy. outside Ebbing, Missouri. Yeah. When you, when you don't have cable and you don't go to the movies, really. Oh, well. And uh, I also watched... There's another movie I watched. Oh, God. It's on the tip of my tongue. Oh, uh, Battle of the Sexes. Uh, oh, that's with, out? Uh, Emma with Emma Stone, Stone and, yeah, yeah. and Steve Carell? Yeah. How was that? That's was good. Steve Carell. I liked Man, it. All kinds of good... You saw all these in theaters? Uh, yeah, Dollar Theater. Uh, but, uh... uh yeah. Um, good movies. Good, all, all three of them I would recommend for Wonderful. different reasons. Wonderful. Um, I had a weird yeah. over the past weekend. I watched because I had a I had a I had an impromptu like four day weekend because I took uh, Monday off and then ended up having like a snow day on Tuesday. Uh, I don't know why, but I I watched I rewatched uh, the Wolverine. Oh, the, I did. Yeah, as in the the second why? the second Wolverine movie. First of all, I like parts of that movie, and not all of it's completely bad. But it, overall, it's, it, ain't, it ain't no. It's horrible. Uh, no, no, no. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. After watching that, I feel like okay. I have like a weird relationship with the X Men movies in general because like I'm not a huge fan of the movies. Like just in general, there's like I think I kind of like the second one. The second like, universally, it's accepted X2 that X Two is is, is yeah. the best out of all. Of I like them. the second one, and I could kind of care less about the first and the third one and then uh i i think if i remember correctly i think i oh yeah i watched so i ended up watching days of future past as well days of future past is actually that's that's a good not bad not bad definitely improvement although their their selection of like support characters is fucking weird like like and and the rogue cut kind of makes it interesting the what the rogue cut of the film what's the there's a cut cut of the film that includes rogue the act the character yeah they cut her out of the original theatrical release yeah of and Days so, of Future Past, correct? Yeah, like, and, and it's played by as, same actress, yeah, whatever. Same actress. And, and a pack one. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, they yeah. add in like twenty five minutes of extra stuff that actually fills in a couple plots. How was she even in the movie? Uh, well, it takes place takes place in the. It's it's all of her stuff is in the future. In the future, she's only in yeah. the future. Oh wait, sorry, yeah. sorry, totally. <laughs> Thought you just. Watched I this, did not Nick. watch Days of Future Past. God damn it! I Nick. watched First Class. First Class. Okay, uh, those sorry. are very different movies. I know, yeah. but I get them very confused. Okay. Apparently, so I have not watched Days of Future Past again. I remember liking that one though. I watched First Class and I watched The Wolverine. I've got the Rogue Cut. If you want, I to actually like The Wolverine more. Oh my god! Than a lot of those Dude, movies. Dude, his fucking his CG claws look like they're from like fucking 1992. But like by like a B studio. You know that was like, that was oh written and directed god. by the same guy who did Logan. I understand. And I think it kind of shows. I think I appreciated Dude, like, it more after watching So here's the thing. Logan. So I watched, because you remember that Wolverine got uh, leaked. Like that? Like the, the, the movie the got leaked movie? before it came out I did. I did not remember this. But like, it was like a rough cut of the movie. Like a lot of the CG hadn't been added yeah, in. Yeah, that's, that's what usually happens. And so I watched it, and then I watched the real movie. And like almost like the one without the CG is better. <laughs> <laughs> like it's it's pretty bad like how like I, I think I think you should go watch the movie again I don't think it's nearly as bad as you remember it as, in, in, as, as far as like the visual effects go it did nothing nothing egregious about it stuck out to me nothing like X-Men Origins Wolverine which was by far by far I think the worst movie in that entire franchise wait by far hold on Am I thinking of X Men Origins Wolverine? You're thinking of the one with Deadpool? Yes. God okay, that's, damn it! Yeah, wait, that wait, was, which one's the, is the Wolverine the one where he goes to Japan? Yes. Yeah, okay. That, sorry, 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 sorry. Samurai, I'm, yeah. I got I got the two confused. Sorry, I was thinking of that's Origins funny. Wolverine. Both got mo- yeah, yeah, yeah. movies in this franchise. There's too many fucking Wolverine movies. Yeah. Um, that's the one that got leaked. Uh, sorry, uh, the Wolverine, the one where he goes to Japan. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's a pretty good movie. Good. Didn't we see that in theaters? Yeah. Is that? That's yeah. Pretty, and I think I liked it more the second time I saw it. Yeah. I never got around to seeing it. It's all right. Not bad. Um, yeah, I uh, sorry, it was a little bit of a tangent there. <clears throat> I finished Longmire, which is a really good show. What the fuck I, is that? It's a uh, kind of a it's a police reviews role about a, a sheriff in Wyoming. It's got Katie Sackhoff. <laughs> sounds and, boring uh, as fuck. Blue Diamond Phillips. No, it's actually really good. You Blue say that Phillips. it sounds boring as fuck, but I'm gonna sit here. Katie and... Sackhoff. I don't know who the fuck that is. Yeah, neither do I. You, I think I think Chris Davis is like fifty year old, fifty yeah. years old at heart. 
He's at home wa- eating Charleston chews Starbuck and watching from police Battle procedural generated. Starbuck from Battlestar. Okay, Galactica. I do know who that I don't, is. I okay. never. I don't. Nick She's... hasn't seen a, a BSG. I have not. What? I have not seen BSG. I'm sorry. How I will that go su- home. How is it su- not? Su- how is it surprising that Nick hasn't seen BSG? That's not that surprising. But that's to me. like. That's one of the fun- best sci-fi shows. It's but ever that's been. But that's also written. a daunting thing to just ask someone to hey go watch BSG. Yeah. Yeah. It's not exactly it's not that a I don't short, quick thing. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. But it's funny because uh, like, you say Longmire sounds boring as fuck, but I'm about to sit here and recommend to you another movie about kind of a police procedural that takes place in Wyoming that came out last year, and it was one of my favorite movies of the whole fucking year. Wind River? Wind River? Oh, God damn, I've movie. been meaning okay. to watch that. So fucking good. I own it if you want. Okay. I've never heard of it. I've been meaning uh, to watch it. It has Jeremy Renner and... Uh, Elizabeth Olsen. Elizabeth Olsen, Olsen in it. And the only kind of, good Olsen. Yes, and it is... So good. Yeah. Easily one of my favorite movies of last I've year. I've heard it's good. That is, it's funny because that is pretty much exactly how you just described Longmire. I will say I did binge watch all of Black Mirror. All of it? Yeah. Like all four seasons? Yeah. I mean, wow. you say all Black you Mirror. say all that. Like the first couple of seasons have like three episodes or something. The first couple of seasons are short. And they're not like extremely, extremely uh, long. The I first... did not know. Is it... Yeah. Is this one of the? Uh, is this this is this is a, like a British show, right? So the author season oh, shorter. Why does it have to be British? I mean, like, there's, uh, don't no, a lot of their shows no, no, no. It's like... not about that. Like, season one has like three or four episodes. Same with season two, and season three and four have like lo- like long. But I mean, it's like a grand total of maybe uh, like twelve hours. Yeah, it's not like insane. It's not like I did it over the weekend. I've done it over the past couple of weeks. Uh, but since we did a last like our last proper show, I watched all of that. And holy shit, I didn't realize that show was as good as it is. Maybe I'll watch that. The, the, watch. The, the thing is, is it's, I don't, what's, I don't know if there's a term for it. Um, every episode's completely different. Yeah. That, and, that, and none of them, any, anything, oh, I say anything. There's it's like, like an anthology series. Like yeah, every, anthology, every thank different. you. They, some have su- some subtle things to do with each other. Uh, but it's pretty good. There's like, it's all about. You How know, was the pig fucking episode? Um, that's the first one. And it's probably my least favorite. Really? Yeah. It gets so much better. It don't don't watch the pig fucking episode and be like, this show's dumb. Like you can honestly maybe skip that one. Uh, but uh, I feel like the pig fucking episode though is like the episode of like real people in. Kind like, of, but the whole like, so what the, is this about fucking a pig? What is this obsession so, with fucking a pig? The whole thing about this series is all about technology. Yeah, it's so it's in the future and it's all about how technology like affects our lives and stuff. And the only thing technological about that episode is like oh. Twitter and YouTube like it's not really that crazy I mean the craziest thing is they try to do like like live action CG or whatever but it's not even like a part of the like I, I don't know what I'm the so I don't confused know confused right now wait that's fine you don't know what the pig fucking episodes about I've never seen Black Mirror you I feel like we've talked seen, about that one we've episode talked about of the, it on show the show like before. ten times. Well, okay, well, whatever. I I didn't know about this pig fucking thing. Is this is they, this some they, kind of future? They blackmail like a, 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 a. They don't black. They essentially, they kidnap a princess. They're like, hey, the only way we'll let her go alive is if this like send 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 senator send, whatever. No, it's an England par- Parliament member. Whatever. If this guy fucks a pig live on TV, that's the only way we'll let her go. Okay, and that's what it's about. Okay, I, I thought the technology See? aspect, like, Color there would be some kind of, like, future version of, of Twitch plays fuck a pig or something. No. I don't know, I don't no. know who Daniel Kal- Kaluuya Tell you what, you want a is. good British show to watch? Broadchurch. Pass. Um, That's really good. It's got David Tennant. Uh, he's the he's one of the main stars. Uh, like prime David Minister. Tennant. Thank you, Rezus. He was the Prime Minister. Yeah, uh, but uh, the the thing about that show is since everyone's completely different, they fucking do this with the quality of them. Yeah. Um. So some of them. I'm are assuming really they had like different directors and writers. Yeah, all of them. Like, Jody Foster directed one, and I actually really liked her her, her yeah. uh, one. Huh. Uh, but there are some that are like. There's one where there's the main lady is named uh, uh Mia Nolan. Mia Nolan. Yeah, her last name is Nolan. Oh, is that your favorite episode? Uh, no. Oh yeah 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 okay uh, Daniel Kalu is the guy from Get Out. That's another good episode. I eh, that's an okay episode. I have problems with that episode. I I, I have a main pr- problem with the premise of that episode, and it's hard to talk about without spoiling it. Well, because perhaps you can't, like, I keep I'm tempted to watch this. Maybe I'll I'll try do, and do it. It's on Netflix. That. It's a uh, it's a gr- it's a great show. Um, I w- I would recommend it. There's some uh, interesting uh, com- social commentary. 
um, on yeah, how how technology interacts with our lives and stuff. Cool. Um, I, I would recommend it. I, I was kind of worried. Now I was like worried going in. My coworkers like, oh my god, I love that show, but you like, I feel like every time I watch an episode, I have to go take like a bath. And like I have to clean myself because I feel so like, uh, because it's like, I guess like most of the episodes aren't like super positive. It's usually yeah. like, Hey, technology. And now we're all fucked. Uh, that's what a lot of them are. But I like, I watched like five episodes in a row once and I was fine. I, didn't stab <laughs> I was okay. After. okay. <laughs> all right. Let's, uh, let's kind of, let's rein it back in. We do have yeah. video game stuff to talk about. A couple. Believe it or not. Um, so I want to, I want to read some feedback. Of course, we always start our shows off with feedback from our previous episodes and we'll enter you guys anyone who leaves feedback in the uh, drawing to win a free game every single month um and i'm gonna go back three episodes here there's not a whole lot of feedback from the last last couple episodes but i'm gonna read starting with episode 531 which was our last regular show of 2017 uh that's the one where we talked about never stop sneaking and uh, accounting plus mm-hmm. so um uh rice ball 80 said uh, everybody seemed to forget Chris Davis was the first to mention Never Stop Sneaking on the cast. So good on him being on point with the names. I think we had some issues with the names. I don't remember. Um, seems like I a was, late... I was filling in details. About oh, that's right. Were... Remember you were like... It's the... just oh, played... I couldn't remember like names of characters yeah, and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay, that's right. Uh, it seems like a lazy, blatant ripoff when you, uh, when you can play the game with one thumb. And Crispy just describing Accounting Plus is probably more entertaining than the game itself. <laughs> uh thank you thank all you guys and happy new year uh cool. i mean i would disagree with the the one thumbstick the one button simple can be good play. i yeah. i think that game's bigger problem lies in, in a lot of what no one so the, the core about. concept of the game like the the mechanics and stuff are good it's just the fact that they don't there's not it enough grow yeah thank you it, it nothing happens like you it's like it's it's like it starts and then you're expecting something to to you know like some big revelation or something to change but it just never happens you just you know and there's no increase in quality it just stays at that level yeah and you can't have a game that doesn't get better you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, no, yeah. You can't just start. You can't just be in like Zelda, Ocarina of Time, and never leave like the the forest. Was the yeah. forest that they're Kikiri in? Kakiri Forest. Kakiri Forest. That's like this game. It's just you 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 walk out of a door in Kakiri Forest and you enter another Kakiri Forest and you just do that over and over. Yeah, yeah. That sounds. Would not... you play a Zelda like that? No, no, I yeah. wouldn't. But like the the developer behind the game, he, I mean, his previous effort was. Uh, Dust. Dust and Lazy and Tail. Yeah, which was, was a great game. Which was a com- fucking amazing game. Yeah, it was, but it was a very complex controlling game with like, you know, it used every button on the controller and it did like combos and. and so it's not a matter of like yeah, skill he, he or inability to do knocking so. it down to a single button game would be an interesting development challenge. Yeah, so yeah. that's probably but, uh, why he did it. You know, it's I think it's more of just a content question of you know. It, maybe it wasn't as robust or as full as, as we would like. I don't think it, the, the simplified control is really that big of an issue. Yeah, it no. wasn't. I, uh, I enjoyed how the game controlled. Scarecrow said, this is a little bit of a long one, but it has to do with Hollow Knight, so I think y'all will be okay with it. Bafa nada. <laughs> ba- Bafa nada. Uh, I feel that Hollow Knight would probably be best enjoyed without all of this end-of-the-year pressure added on to an already difficult game. The timing feels a bit unfortunate. Uh, I think he's referring to me because I've been kind of playing that tail end yeah. at the tail end of 2017 correct i wasn't really trying to let that pressure me too much though because I, I i decided very early on that like i know i'm not going to finish this game yeah so it, if i want to put it on my top 10 i'm still gonna put it on my top 10 even though i didn't finish it um sometimes if you're not beating a boss or it feels unfair it's worth to uh, it's worth it just do something else in the game because it could be that you're missing some stuff that can make all the difference in the world um nick i recommend revisiting the earlier areas pretty often and just searching around i ended up making my game way harder than it needed to be because i skipped or just didn't find some really easy shops to get at in the beginning areas i found a ton of charms and notch slots uh way later than i should have yeah and i think he's right right now i'm still kind of like i'll be honest i haven't played in a couple weeks i haven't played since the last time i updated you guys and i was stuck on that boss in the uh city of tears that was called yeah um, so uh, what, and that's kind of something I, I talked to Nick about, and I would say I would recommend uh, finding like a, a charm list or something like that, and, you know, and to just there's so many charms I agree with uh, Scarecrow mm-hmm. that are well hidden, and then I'm like, fuck me, if I would have had this like you know 20 hours ago in the game i would have like not enjoyed it more but i think i would have had an easier time or yeah. enjoyed myself more at least um and so i, I definitely recommend pulling up a charm list and that is i actually did that for the last time i want. played it i, I kind of went charm hunting yeah uh, i found a couple and i that i thought would help me and i went back and fought the boss and i still got just reamed um 
So I don't know what my plan of attack is next time I go back into that game, but I, I fully intend to. Um, but I appreciate your recommendation. I'm still loving the game, and I'm still very much looking forward to going back to it. Like, right now, I just, like, I finished Neo, and that was, like, you know, if anyone who watched my playthrough of Neo, especially how it ended, they knew I was, like, super, super, super frustrated. I finished the game. I yeah. did. But, man, it just, it, it beat me down. And uh, as soon as I finished it, I was kind of like, I want to play something a little more relaxing. Um, so, uh, I'm going to move on to episode 532 which was our 2018 preview show. Um, there's a comment here from Equack. Uh, and this is actually a comment he's referring to something that happened two shows prior to this. Jesus. Okay. Uh, but I wanted to comment on tuning forks. We talked about tuning forks. Do you oh, remember no. this? We did. Although the, the context of how we were talking about tuning forks may not want to be revisited. Anyways, it's true that if you touch the top of a, the top of a tuning fork as it's oscillating, you will dampen it and stop the sound. However... If you touch the bottom tip of the tuning fork to a surface, you can transfer the oscillation without dampening it much. Oh, God. <laughs> this is it's making you squirm. <laughs> uh, you can, for example, touch it to the body of a string instrument, which will amplify the sound you hear. You can touch the tip of, tip to your ear bone and hear the sound directly in your bones. That's fucking weird. Your ear bone? Ear bone, I guess. I mean, that's cartilage, isn't that? Yeah. yeah. I'm assuming he means the cartilage in your ear, not... You don't really have an ear maybe, bone. Maybe he means your teeth, maybe? No, oh, fuck you. Is this an ear bone? <laughs> well, no, but there's like there's a there's a connection, you know, between the, the mouth and the ear. I, mean, I can't remember. It's in your it face. <laughs> no one's on it. Yeah, Googling ear bone. The middle ear contains three tiny bones known as the uh oscillus oh the os- it sounds like an oscillation and uh, you uh, have an oscillation bone right there in your so ear we're given the latin name for the distinctive like shapes they're referred to as hammer anvil and stirrup oh okay i do remember reading about this or learning this in like uh, anatomy or this whatever. is making my teeth hurt just thinking about it though i'm feeling i'm like i'm i'm imagining like vibrations in my head and that's never fun but how do i t- where like where <laughs> wangless this is nightmare inducing it seems like you'd have to stick it way fucking deep inside your ear to get yeah. to the ear bone, which you is, you know, you're not supposed to stick shit in there. Yep. Bonus fact, Beethoven used this method to hear his piano after he went deaf. <laughs> I thought you were going to say penis. <laughs> <laughs> Beethoven used his penis. penis. Oh, my God. He has. He goes on with more physics. Do you want me to keep reading the physics of tuning forks or should I? No. Okay. <laughs> It's just gonna get worse. If you're curious, you can find this comment on our on our 2018 preview show. And last but not least, our feedback from episode five thirty. Thank you, Zero Skies, for specifying you stick it on your temple. Oh, that seems much easier and safer. Are they actually made out of like calcium, like bone? Tuning forks? No, <laughs> the fucking bone ear bones. I don't know. This isn't the science podcast. Yeah, we talk about that. video games here. All bones are probably made out of the same material. So. But, like, your teeth aren't bones, technically. Aren't they, they're not? No. I guess they're not. This is weird. Feedback from episode 534, which was our 2017 award show. Uh, Ichi's Kid says, uh, From what I've read online, it seemed like the near automata development time was most spent on creating the open-world RPG aspects. Uh, I certainly understand Nier has a lackluster combat system, but I'm very excited to see what the next open world platinum title plays like. Rest in peace, Scalebound. Mm. Um, whatever, I, I, the next open world platinum title, I don't think that's going to be Bayonetta 3, and we do know Nier is getting a sequel. Um, I ha- I kind of feel like the next, and I feel like Nier has been really successful, mm-hmm. and platinum needs a successful game right now. No, well, they don't. Yeah, don't they? Like they their last couple games. Just fine. Their last couple games have been they not said that very successful. Near saved the fucking company. That's what I'm saying. Mainly That's what I'm they, saying. Mainly because they sold so many three. body pillows. They've got the ports of Bayonetta one and two going on, I and you know it's platinum. They've got like five other projects but in the works. What do you think's funding those other projects? That fucking near money. Well, I can't believe I'm saying that. Near money. When the fuck did this become a thing? I know. Near That's money. True. Um, I, I I'd be willing to bet the next open world platinum game because those, those other mystery projects that you just mentioned are probably all like smaller scale stuff. I don't see this as a studio that really dabbles much in open world stuff. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. We don't know what they're what they're working on yet, but 
it just seems to me like they they shot for the moon with Scalebound. They got canceled. I could see them maybe shying away from doing more open world stuff after something like that happens. Um, well, they shot for the moon with Scalebound because it was an ambitious project that Kamiya had been wanting to make for over a decade. Yeah, but then, but then they saw that money just get yanked out from under them. They had to cancel the game. So, I mean, they burned a bridge with Microsoft. Yeah, whatever, sure. So. Did I'm they just, burn a bridge with Microsoft, well, or did it go the other way around? Yeah. And vice versa. I'm just saying, I think the next open world game you're going to see from Platinum is probably whatever is the next year. That would be my guess. Yeah. And if you want to relive those times when Scalebound was actually coming out, and it, the world was optimistic, go to your local Best Buy. Why? They still have Scalebound marketing up in some stores. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, uh, just because some stores have it doesn't mean all do. Uh, Like... South US 290 Best Buy had it for at least last time I was there. Hmm. That's sad. <laughs> they, that should sad. The, they should pull that down. The game was canceled like nine months ago, wasn't it? It was. It's been a Most while. Most likely what happened was someone in corporate Best Buy, you know, a year ago was like, oh, Scalebound's going to come out in. This is when we put up our Scalebound stuff. And then that all got packaged, made, and shipped. And then they, the fucking manager at Best Buy who doesn't know shit about video games was like, oh, this week we're supposed to put up this thing, and they put it up. That's how, that's what happens yeah. at these stores. Yeah. I mean, they didn't know it got canceled. Wait, try, you got a 2B body pillow? <laughs> Wait, oh God. stop the presses. You got a 2B body pillow. It's, it's just a, two ham-sized pillows stitched together. Is this the joke? He's, he's saying it's a butt. Uh, it's a big butt. I like butts. Two butt. Two butts. <laughs> <laughs> um anyways thank you guys for the feedback um of course if there's anything you want to say after tonight's episode drop us a comment at fourplayernetwork.com i'll read them at the beginning of the next episode and enter you in the drawing for january uh now let's uh let's jump into it. i think like there was something i was going to mention oh yeah i forgot to mention before we did feedback uh game of the year stuff we are working on our game of the year videos uh the first one should be coming out soon once we have everything lined up yeah but it's going to be this month Yes. So keep your eyes peeled. Keep your eyes locked on fourplayernetwork.com and our social media and Discord and all that stuff. We'll make sure every single one of you sees these videos with your eyes. Um, I think the first one's going to be Brad. <laughs> yeah. And then and then we'll release them uh, a couple of days at, after each other, I guess. We're going to stagger the release is what I'm trying to say. Correct. Yeah. We always do. What do you think we're going to just release them all at once? We release them day after day after day. One per day. If if we can make that happen. We'll see what happens. We will see what happens. Let's talk about video games, though. Um, who's in, oh, You played the newest thing. Oh, no, yeah. In fact, you've played the only like new thing, really. At least to, since we did a last podcast, yeah. I guess. So, uh, yeah, so I finally got... So what, what? here's how this happened. Oh, there's I, a story here. Yeah, well, I needed to capture footage for The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild uh, for our, and our Game of the Year stuff. Spoiler, uh, alert. spoiler alert that's gonna be on some of, some of our lists is that really a spoiler that's the joke nolan is my sarcasm okay i feel like my sarcasm has been way off lately i guess so anyway i was capturing some footage uh because i own the game um and i was like man i forgot how much i enjoyed this game uh even though it's i'm still you know very much disappointed in it uh i st- I, I enjoy it so i was like uh, I've done so much in the game already. I've already, uh, you know, I already beat the game. Or I, I could go around collecting shrines, and I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm gonna buy the DLC. So I bought the DLC. Um, I did some of the uh, Trial of the Sword. Yes. Which we talked about quite a long time ago when it first which came out. Which looked really Crispy interesting too it. when we talked about it. Yes. Um, and it, honestly, that made me even more disappointed in the game because the Trial of the Sword is like you you know you, you get warped to this place and it feels like you're in a shrine like the the exterior walls look yeah. like that shrine that stone with like the, the runes blue pulsating in it lights. yeah but in the interior it was all foresty and i'm like god damn that would make for these if these were just fucking shrines yeah that would have been so much better um or even a fucking dungeon uh but anyway um so i did a bunch of that i did two of them um it's enjoyable. It's one of those things where you start it, you don't have any kind of uh, yeah. anything on you. You go in like kind of all you have are your. Uh, it's like a multi-level dungeon, right? Yeah. Kind of yeah. Well, yeah. You start at the beginning. You don't, you start with nothing. I mean, you can pick up like some sticks and stuff. 
Um, and uh, you can throw bombs. You still have all your abilities. So you yeah. have your bombs and your magnesis and your, your uh, what, whatever the stopping time one is. Um, I can't even remember all the terminology. Yeah, I, I don't remember the names. I haven't played the game since. I just, I just use the items. Um, and so that's, you know, bombs are obviously like, you know, priceless uh, yeah. material. Since you just keep reuse them over and over. Uh, but anyway, um, so thank you. Stasis scarecrow is the time freezing one. So I got there. I did do a bunch of that. You know, your master words gets more powerful, but I was like, eh, this is kind of like, I don't want to say it's boring. I mean, it's still good. I mean, like halfway you didn't finish that though. Right. Cause that's, like I a... did two out of three. Oh, uh, so close. yeah. Well, I, you say so close. The first one had like six levels and then the second one had like 12 levels and i'm assuming the third one will probably have more maybe yeah 18 um and so uh i decided to do the battle because i was going to cast this game yeah and i was like well if i'm going to cast it i don't want to just do uh yeah reborn in chat says the third round is a bitch uh that does not shock me um so i wanted to do something different uh so i was like oh, i'll do the ballad of the champions dlc and i i didn't know too much about it i knew it involved all the champions and for those that don't know how it works, is it starts off with what I thought was going to be something amazing, but it wasn't. Um, it was okay. So how how it starts is you get a you get a little uh, a text from Zelda. A text message. Kind of. It's like a voice in your head. Whatever. She leaves you a voicemail, and she's like, "Link, Link, you must return to the Shrine of Resurrection and place the Sheikah Stone in the blah 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 whatever the slate." Yep. So you gotta you gotta fucking teleport back there, and you put the stone in, and all of a sudden it gives you this fucking. Uh, like pitchfork thing kind of looks like a tuning fork kind of looks like a big thing it's a it's a weapon that can one hit kill anything what but when you wield it you you also, also die in one die hit. one hit so you have a quarter of a heart anything um that hits you kills you and it's like all right now go and do these four shrines uh, while you're carrying this weapon Oh, and and so you have to go up and you have to find an area where the enemies are and you kill all the enemies and then the shrine comes up and then you go in the shrine and you do it. You have to do that four times. So what I thought was that you had to do all four without dying and if you died, it reset the whole thing. But all that happens when you die is it just loads your last like save. Oh, so you're saying there's really not, the stakes aren't really as high as they yeah. seem. Like. And I was actually excited by that. I was excited by this challenge. I was like, "Oh shit, this is gonna be hard. I'm ready." It actually doesn't doesn't really surprise me because, as much as I love Breath of the Wild, I don't. This really kind of goes for any Zelda. Like, I don't think it's a series that's ever really leaned heavily on like challenge. Yeah, necessarily. It's at least not since. It, but know, anyway, it I, I was excited for that. That wasn't the case. Anyway, I completed all that. So then, once you do all that. You now have, uh, it unlocks four more points, and they're all, essentially, they're close to the uh, the dungeons, the, the champion's dungeons or whatever. Uh, and so you have to go to those, and you find the shrine. And in that shrine, it gives you these, like, kind of rough, like, map icons that kind of show you three areas, and they give you clues. Yeah. Uh, so you gotta go find those, and you find the shrines, uh, or you do, like, kind of, like things like sometimes it's like oh you have to race through all these circles and sometimes it's kill enemies whatever shrine appears you go on the shrine do all those shrines yeah three of them and then you go back to the dungeon where the the beast was and then you have to fight the boss from that dungeon again but here's the thing you don't get to choose the items that you go in with it gives them to you oh and so it's kind of like you're kind of almost given the a uh, items that the champion who originally fought them would have had gotcha so when okay. i did urbosas i went in with her like scimitar and her shield and stuff like that yeah and that's it like you don't get to take in anything you had on you so it which makes, makes the it... boss fight more difficult yeah um i don't think i don't know if the boss is any more difficult than it normally is i think it might be the same boss it, it might i think it might be maybe slightly more difficult i'm not sure yeah. i'm not a zelda expert uh this was me doing um uh Rivalis, i think um, that one. Oh, at least the environments that you fight them in are different. Too. No, they're they're same. They're the same environment. It's just it looks all fucking film green. grainy and green and stuff. Yeah. Uh, so it, it makes it look slightly different. It's kind of harder to see. Um, and yeah, so Prince of the Universe rings at the point. You still get your champion abilities, yeah. which are almost vital. Uh, when you're doing these, uh, just because it can be very tough. Um, 
not having a bunch of healing items and shit like yeah. that. Uh, so Mipha's Grace was like a godsend because I, especially when I first started doing these because uh, I hadn't played Zelda in so long and all of a sudden I was thrown up against a fucking boss. Yeah. Uh, and I got my ass handed to me the first time. Um, so anyway, what y'all just saw if you were watching the the stream was me fighting whatever version of Ganon that was. Raviolis. Yeah, Raviolis Ganon. Once again, that was, that was another one of my, my kind of poo poo negatives on this game was that all of the bosses are like the same fucking they're boss re- yeah, yeah and that really frustrated me um, especially considering like when like zelda to me has always been about like variety in dungeons variety in boss bosses boss encounters so like that was the same thing with majora's mask so, i was really so bummed they, out they, about that they fucking flipped the game upside down in the past it was always what you're doing in the open world you didn't care about yeah you were excited to get to a dungeon to do the dungeon to fight the boss now that is my least favorite thing about this game. Yes. I don't give a fuck about the bosses. It's just weird, too, because like for such a massive game, you'd think there would be more dungeons and or bosses. Like, but Majora's Mask was really disappointing for me because it, coming off of Ocarina of Time, which had, like, nine, nine bosses? Ten Whatever, bosses, yeah, a maybe? lot, yeah. And then you go into Majora's Mask, there are four. Four, yeah. Uh, and then this is, like, the biggest Zelda game ever made, and there's four. But they're all the same boss, and the dungeons almost exactly yeah. the same. Yeah, it's, it's kind of it's kind of a bummer. But like like you said, like the stuff outside of the dungeons kind of makes up for a lot of that. Stuff, oh, it definitely so. does. Um, uh, and another cool so a cool thing about this this champions ballad, and I know I, I, don't get me wrong, I dislike that it's me fighting those same four bosses again. Yeah. Um, I like that it's slightly more challenging because you're kind of like almost like taking over the persona of the champion who originally fought them. But you do get these really cool cutscenes. Yeah, uh, I, that give you. That more. was one thing I was trying to like convey during the award show last week, and I don't think I did a very good job of it. But like one thing I loved about the Zelda was the way they conveyed the story with the cutscenes. I think yeah. the cutscenes are beautiful, fucking beautiful. And I will say the Champions Ballad cutscenes have been even better, nice than the stuff from the game. Like this cutscene was really fucking good. I liked it. Like you learn more about Ravioli and and <laughs> the, you know, Zelda coming to them and asking for yeah. help and stuff like that. Um. And there's this really fucking bitchin' scene that he does. Uh, but um, one thing I haven't heard you mention yet. Mm-hmm. Motorcycle? I have not even interacted with it. There's, I feel like that was like the big I, thing. I, I, that probably should have been the first thing I did, but I just... I do you was know too, how to do it? I have, no, I haven't even fucking done it yet. Like, I, was just, I, I was too distracted by the game itself. Like, I was too distracted having fun. Like, I haven't really rid, I've even ridden a horse. This is actually really fucking cool right here. Um... But you can like when you're playing this DLC, you're still free to just do all the oh, other yeah. stuff. In no, the game. you're you're doing you're just in the world. It's just there's now new things that have, they have pop, put into the world in certain places. Yeah. Um, like, and I think getting the motorcycle is like an a, an unlock for beating the Champions Valid DLC. Actually. Oh really? Really? I think so. Ah. Yeah. Kind of... Prince of the Universe just confirmed that you have to finish the DLC to get the bike. Yeah. Why so not? I can't even get it yet. I thought the bike would like see that 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 sucks because like. If I was to play this DLC, I feel like I would get, I would beat the DLC, quote unquote. Mm-hmm. I would get the credits would roll or whatever the fuck and happens, need to be done. and then I'd be done with it. Yeah. But they'd give me a bike, and I'm like, but I wanted to use the bike to do all the things, but now I can't use the bike. Yeah, that does. Well, you do new game plus. Well, there's also like, other DLC. I mean, if yeah, you, if I guess you... it's just my it's my fault for not being the kind of person that really does much in the ter- in the way of new game plus. Usually, I play a game as soon as those credits roll, with the with a few exceptions. As soon as the credits roll. I'm done. I move on to the next thing. That's just because yeah, I'm trying to play so much stuff. I'm, yeah, I'm usually similar to that. But like I said, even though I've already beaten this, I did not have any problem jumping right back into it. The, yeah. the world is still fun to explore. Um, but uh, I, don't, I think I mentioned it before the podcast. I don't remember. Uh, the cool thing about what happens is as soon as you beat this new champion, uh, your ability that you got from that champion, like Ravioli's Grace or Mifa, wait, Mifa's Grace, Ravioli's Gale, um, Darut's something, whatever. Yeah. Uh, Darut's protection. Protection. Thank you. All of those abilities, the cooldowns on them. I don't know if it's like cut in half, but it's like way significantly quicker. shorter. Yeah, it is. That seems like it'd be very, very handy. And so I'm like, I'm almost like, well, what the fuck? I wish I could have gotten this at like the beginning of the game. Yeah, <laughs> um, but I guess I mean I think it would be nice for people who maybe who are planning on doing like getting all 900 Korok seeds or yeah. all 120 shrines and and haven't done that yet and they still have a ways to go. Like yeah. Um, is there a marble madness shrine? I don't know what that means. Like one of those shrines where you have to use the most controls to oh, manipulate no. a boulder. Uh, no, so I mean, there mar- is some mar- oh marble, marble madness. madness. I was like, yeah. what? There is. Some, I now will say, sorry. Let me do, before we get too far off. If y'all were watching the footage, fucking bass, bass hole. 
Um, the fucking uh, bird with the accordion. Yeah. He's Kess? in this. What, huh? I think his name is Kess. It, is it Kess? It's, I thought it was. The, 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 yeah, the, the, the ca- parrot playing the accordion. It's K-A-S-S. Castle. Um, you like in him? The, like, I understand that Tumblr loves him and he's a fucking like meme, but he's just fucking is every, a meme? he's everywhere in this DLC. Like everything that is anything in this DLC involves him and I'm just fucking done with him. I don't give a oh, fuck. Man, I, I loved finding him in the, in the main game. Just cause but he's everywhere in this. I guess you just, there is such thing as overusing characters. Yes, so I, please. Oh my God. Just like give me anyone else or don't even give me a person. Just like let the fucking omnipotent voice that always talks to me tell me everything, like ugh, like every and I mean I guess oh it helps you find where he is because when you get close to it you can hear him playing. It. But the fucking everywhere that you need to go to find him is like uh, like gives you the exact location on the map. I understand I also reborn they, that I, it's the champion's ballad and so it's all about a song. I understand that. I kind of wish he, he, the the song he played changed. Like yeah. you could find him playing different tunes. He always so so okay so that that kind of comes back into Champions Ballad. He does sing a song about each champion, and that is unique. Oh, that's but cool. yes, every time you find him in the world, he is playing the same fucking song. Yeah, um, it's one of my favorite songs on the quote unquote soundtrack. Yeah, which um, is still a good soundtrack. Just... So going back to the thing, the the shrines in the game are good. The new shrines they added, they're all pretty unique. Y'all saw me doing some before yeah. the podcast. I was yeah. playing it. Uh, they do add um, a little bit um, to it. They're, they're not like shitty shrines. They're all pretty good. Uh, they they definitely they don't make any... you use your brain. Uh, they they take the abilities to, I don't want to say to the next level, but they definitely do more with them. They, uh, they don't, have you come across any marble puzzles uh no chris, chris there's, davis there's hates been, the marble there's puzzles. been interactions with balls obviously because that's like 90 oh, percent of what the shrines yeah, there are has been. but it hasn't been like the marble madness like that um and i was this is actually getting close to the end of my footage i guess i didn't realize i'm not about this game for as long as i have been it's like i have like 20 something minutes of footage but um this is one of the things I remember hating about the game is the fact you can't climb walls when it's raining. Yeah. Oh, it, my God. You know, I, I I think that's really cool in terms of the what you know, because it it, go, it it's related to how everything in the game is physics-based, and, and that makes sense. Yeah. Um, but, but there's like, also, like, clothing and armor sets that are built around certain aspects. Like, sure. Like, the, there's the climbing set, which gives you better stamina when climbing. Correct. But that should also be like an unlock to be able to climb a cliff in the rain. Also, I think this is also a balancing issue and not maybe not a balancing issue, but like whoever was in charge of like writing the code that like dictated how often the game like rain like rain occurred in the mm-hmm. game. Whew. It rains. It so depends on where you're much. at. It depends there are areas where it doesn't rain at all. Like it I- doesn't rain in the desert. Yeah, I mean, it, it, but there's it, also not a whole lot of stuff to climb. In the yeah, desert. it just depends on where you're at. There, know? there, are, but there were just so many points in this game where I, like, I felt, I felt like when I was playing this game, a solid like 65, 70 percent of the time I was playing this game, it was, it was raining <laughs> outside. Maybe that's a bit of an exaggeration, but that's what it feels like in my brain. Yeah, <laughs> uh, which kind of sucks, but you know. So yeah, uh, on, I am gonna keep playing this game. I'm probably gonna finish all the DLC. I've been enjoying it quite a bit. Um, the uh, Trial of the Sword is quite difficult. I kind of want to go back and play it just because I've been itching to play it, play more of it. I, I would recommend it. The DLC, honestly, it's been worth it. I mean, I'm I I used to I think be it's a twenty bigger, bucks for both of them, right? Correct. Yeah. I used to be a yeah. bigger stickler on buying DLC, but I think I've gotten to a point where I'm like, eh, whatever. I mean, I I feel like I definitely get my money worth my money's worth out of it. Yeah. Um. But yeah. Cool. All would right. recommend. Well, I'll probably squeeze this in sometime. I do want to play it. Um, and I always looking for a good excuse to play more Breath of the Wild. All right. Uh, I'm I, so it's been like uh, th- three weeks since we've had like a regular show, and I haven't really had a chance to talk about this. I I I finished Neo, so I I started um, Persona Five. Kind of this was kind of like one of those games that I was like really wanting to make sure I played an adequate amount of before the end of the year, just in case I wanted to put it in my top ten. Um, how far are you? I'm 22 hours into it. How I think. far are you in the story? I'm almost. I'm pretty much about to go in to fight the the boss of the second palace, that... which is the painter. Okay. Um, in fact, I think I literally have to boot it up and go do like. Oh, I have to go do the calling card thing first, mm-hmm. and then go into the last area to fight the boss. Um, I'm really, really, really enjoying this game. 
a lot. It's not really my usual cup of tea. Mm -hmm. I don't play these kinds of games often. I don't even like anime that much. <gasps> not like I, I don't dislike anime. I just don't. <laughs> I never actively seek it out. Um, and for whatever reason, like the 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 style of of Persona this, this has always game appealed to me. Style is on fleek, dude. It's so fucking good. This is the most fucking dope ass looking game. It's so good, and and I'm I'm not even, I'm just I'm not even really talking about when you're moving the character around. I'm just talking about like fucking going into menus and transitions between scenes. It's just fucking incredible. I've never seen a game this like this is a graphic designer's wet dream. Yeah, like watching this game animate, it's fantastic. Um, like when you look at it, sometimes it looks like it's a little goofy. Like the numbers are all angled and skewed yeah. and stuff. But dude, when you're playing the game, it just works. It's also so consistent. Like if, yeah. if, even when it like leans into something weird like that. It does it so consistently that it just becomes part of its style, which I think is great. Um, and, like, I don't know. The story in this game is a little strange, even for per by Persona standards. Mm -hmm. um, a little? I mean, yeah. I mean, it, I it, they've always been strange, right? But, like, just the, like, the concept of this one is really weird. It's, like, they go into people's hearts to steal their... their basically steal the, the treasure that is that has changed their heart to make them bad people i suppose right yeah. so yeah it, it's it's honestly it's it is kind, i want to say kind of similar to four in that i played a bunch of four I, but four was like like it seemed it even like four had like the midnight channel right you would Correct, go you would yeah. go into the tv and like, well so in, in four the, the way it worked was the person's dungeon you were going into they had some sort of issue that caused them to kind of be split so they had this like almost evil persona in their good yeah. persona and you uh, i don't mean use the word persona of... and persona but the, a personification of them that was pure evil and you had to defeat that yeah. to help that person whereas this is that person has that like evil in their head and you have to go in there and almost like they're almost like glorifying something there's yeah. something that they've chosen and they're that and you have to kind of almost take that away it's from twisted them. You have to their steal. personality right yeah, and you have they're... to steal that thing yeah. from them to kind of bring them back to you know whatever but yeah but man, um, it, it, <laughs> it's a weird premise. It's cool though, and like the I feel like the writing is strange. Like I, I don't know. It's really hard to like articulate what I'm talking about here. But like I feel like the premise and the writing and the dialogue is like super bizarre mm -hmm. in this in this game, even for Persona standards. Because I played like 40 hours of Persona 4, mm -hmm. uh, and I don't remember feeling like like the conversations were ever like particularly awkward or unrealistic but like people in this in this in this game i feel like have a really weird way of looking at things and thinking about things mm -hmm. um well part of that sense probably from atlas and, and developers control of the actual translation sure but like it is a really solid translation i mean i i i'm assuming i've heard, I've heard people talk about this being a really good translation yeah mm -hmm. um and of course the voice acting is i mean it has it's it's all voice not all voice acting but there's a lot of voice acting uh it's, it's only honestly like maybe 50 percent voice acting. i mean when i say a lot of voice acting like I, maybe not by maybe like maybe like brad standards where he expects like every single yeah. fucking word of the game to be voiced um no but any this, any major for, any major story thing and some of the minor story things are voice acted. Yeah, most of the um, uh, side content. Well, I'm, the, yeah, I'm trying to think of the what is it? How do you describe that? The like social uh, social aspects. Yeah, the, the, the social the social links. You yeah, about? social links. Thank yeah. you. Most of those aren't. Uh, there uh, once you uh, there are certain points when you hit like a, a level with them that a special a thing will occur and that will be voiced. Yeah, but yeah, um, so. Question for mm -hmm. those of you who have played Persona more than I have, mm -hmm. that'd be you, know Noah. Sure. Um, people always talk about this game's tutorial being really long, right? Uh, mm -hmm. And it is. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm also having trouble deciphering when people's like, when is the de what is the point where people consider the tutorial done? So that's the the weird thing about this game compared to other games is most games are like, hey, here's the tutorial, and the tutorial's done. Go play the game now. Whereas this is like, hey, here's something. It's just like now you know. Here's a bunch of game. Hey, here's something new. Now you know. Here's they, a bunch of game. Are they taking the Final Fantasy 13 approach? Uh, not. They're taking the Persona approach. Persona's always been like this. Yeah, it's it's just kind of it, it just kind of like trickles out 
features yeah, over the course it, of the first like, I guess 20 and, hours and, of the game. Because the problem is, it can't teach you everything. There can't be a Persona tutorial of everything you need to know about the game, and then the game starts, because that tutorial would probably be like four or five hours long, and it would just be overload. You wouldn't be able to handle it. People would get bored and put the game down. So yeah. they have to kind of spread it out. And that's where the whole joke is, oh, you're still in the tutorial phase. Yeah. Because there's a good, like, the good, like, maybe like one fifth of the, like maybe first fifth or even quarter of the game you're still learning new things and i'm still like even last night i was playing and i got a f i got a new ability or a new thing that i was like oh that's new i guess i'm still in the tutorial i kind of figured like as soon as you finish the first palace that was kind of what was considered the end of the tutorial but i guess not i don't know yeah um but I finally, in the past couple of days, I finally started to get to the point where I feel like they're kind of letting me have a little more freedom to do things. Mm -hmm. Like, I finally got to the point where the, the guy who's, like, hosting me mm -hmm. uh, is like, all right, you can go out at night, yeah. you know. And that was And that's, that was that's one nice. of the kind of, like, yeah, that's what I'm saying is, like, almost like, hey, one of the main aspects of this game is being able to go out and do things on your own. But for the first, you know, huge chunk of it, it's like, yeah, uh, you can't do anything after, you know, like, school. You just have to go to bed and stuff. Yeah. And it almost seems restricting. And Chloe in chat says, I think they stopped being a tutorial base kind of around the last portion of the second palace, which is exactly where I am. It kind of makes sense. I feel like it's getting less hand-holdy. Um, but, like, what you just said kind of reminds me. It's the one thing, the one fucking, like, major gripe I have with this game. Mm -hmm. It's driving me fucking crazy. And hmm. that would be? Fucking... Every time I go to do something, Morgana says, "You shouldn't be do that today. You should go to sleep." Oh yeah, and I'm and I'm like, "Fuck you! I don't want to go to sleep." Yeah. Like like even if I'm like in my bedroom at night, right? You know, because the way the game works is you know you have different parts of the day. You can only do a certain amount of stuff in each part of the day before you move on to the next thing, right? Yeah. yeah. So and your little cat friend Morgana is the one who kind of like talks to you when she's with you all the time, and she's always telling you. Is this she? Huh? Supposedly it's a he. I think it's a. He. Oh yeah, he. I'm sorry. Just the name Morgana. I keep forgetting, but like anyway, Morgana and it's yeah. Morgana so I mean, sounds a little feminine. I, I don't mean, know. The, this is the biggest meme from this game. I'm not. First of all, I'm not super familiar with the memes from this game. I I've actually seen very little of this game prior to me actually booting it up and playing it myself. That's fine. Um, but like, I'll be in my room at night, right? It says and it says evening. I I like I didn't go out. Yeah. I went up to my room instead, and like. The cat's sitting there, and I'm like, I'm going to go over to my little workbench, and I'm going to make a bunch of uh, lock, lock picks, picks right? Because yeah. I can sort of pick treasure chests in the dungeon. And she's like, aren't you getting tired? You should go to sleep now. And I'm like, fuck no. I'm just, I'm in my room. I'm practically in my PJs. Let me sit here and make my goddamn lock picks. Mm -hmm. But she's like, you got a busy day tomorrow. Fuck you. I know I do. Let me make my goddamn lock picks. And then the next day, mm -hmm. it forces me to go into the fucking dungeon, and I don't have my lock picks. Yeah. And I come across a chest that's locked. Yeah. So no, Shit I, I, I agree. Me bonkers. That is very frustrating, especially early on when it's very handholdy and it's like it requires you to do certain things at certain times. It only allows you to do so much in a day. And then it, once again, it's not until after you get through that tutorial section that you have a little more freedom to, yeah. oh, I want to spend tonight making lockpicks or whatever. And um, I remember when we were talking about this game before it came out and, you know, we were talking about like we, before we really knew much about Persona 5, we just knew it was a thing that was coming. Mm -hmm. And I remember talking about how I love Persona. I love the idea of Persona. I love the social aspects of it. I just kind of wish that they took a little bit more of like an actually not open world but more like free approach to the way the world is designed mm -hmm. like instead of having like these hard sections where it's like you do this thing and then you that thing is done and you move on to the next section i wish you i wish there's actually like a clock or something and you had you could just accomplish whatever, whatever you could accomplish in like 10 minutes would be what you did during that portion of the day or sure. something right? right but it's it's i was kind of i was kind of bummed to see that this is just kind of the exact same thing it's persona's always done they didn't take many i don't think they took many risks with like the structure of the game. With that said, I fucking love this game. <laughs> <laughs> fucking, I'm fucking. It's not to mention it's been a long time. I feel like since I've played a turn-based RPG, so it's it feels really nice to kind of sit back into that, you know, style of game again. Because I, I can't remember what the last turn-based one I played was. Um, the combat is really good. Combat's really nice. Um, I I like the change of pace in this game when it comes to capturing personas. Yeah. How you have, you can have uh, the choice of like, oh, I want to ask for more money, or oh, I want to ask for an item, or oh, I want to ask for you to join my team. But you don't just get it. You have to like kind of convince them yeah. to. And so depending Sorry. on their what's up. I lied. I have two gripes. So you don't like that? No, I like the concept. I do. The being being able to. I like how you you capture the personas by 
you know, weakening them, and then you can choose to, to ask them for things or ask them to lend you power. Mm-hmm. But but the dialogue when you actually ask them for their power makes it's no really, fucking yeah, sense it's at really all. Weird. I, I agree with that. I it's make, very like, weird. It like there is no rhyme or reason to how it works, as far as I can tell. And I, like I'm trying to like I think there's like something deeper, and I'm like trying to like figure out the personalities of these individual personas and like talking to them. And like trying to answer their questions based on what I think they would want me to say, it doesn't fucking work. Yep. It doesn't fucking work. There's there's one persona I tried three times in a row to, to capture, couldn't do it. It it's, always ended with "You're a jerk," and he left. So, and I was like, I tried all so three of the dialogue options. The thing about that is you you have to look at their personality because sometimes even if it's the same persona, their perso- personalities I think might be different. Yeah. And uh, and someone ended up sending me like a like a chart, like a flow chart. It's like if their personality is like this. Yeah. They want to hear a dialogue option that's like this. Oh, they want to hear silly dialogue options. Yeah. They want to hear like serious stuff. I feel like I would need to look at a chart or something. No, you you you, you need to yeah, they like, here try I'll teach you the system later. Uh, because yeah, once you figure that out, it becomes a lot easier. I feel like that's the kind of thing I would I need more of a tutorial, a tutorial for. for. Yeah. Cuz a lot uh, of other stuff I feel like is kind of self-explanatory. Like not everything. There's there's some stuff you really do need to be told. Yeah. But like they also spend the time telling you things that are kind of just common sense for our, for you know turn-based RPGs, and that's the kind of thing that I was like, please tell me how this works because I have no yeah, fucking clue. Don't get me wrong, this game is definitely not perfect. It's one of those things where it's like sometimes I want to stay in a dungeon, and I want to level up a bit, but you can't. You'll yeah. run out of you, you, like healing is not as easy in this game as it has been in other yeah. games. You will run out of SP to do your ability, so you can't heal. You'll run out of bullets for your gun. Yeah, uh, you can't get those back until you leave the dungeon. So I mean, yeah, it's it's. I'm just starting to get to the point though where I have, I'm being, I'm starting to be able to like make decisions about like what can I kind of activities can I do or what kind of part time job can I get that will boost my my stats that will yeah. then let me like deepen my relations with ships with different people and like that kind of stuff I've always loved. Uh, like that's one of the reasons I loved Catherine too. Like the social aspects of that game made that so much more fun than just being a puzzle game. Like Agreed. I love that shit, and like that's probably what, what you know. I don't like I said I don't watch a lot of anime, so like that that's the kind of thing that hooks me. Yeah. Um, and I like so far I like all the characters except for Ryuji because he's a fucking <laughs> weird ass. What like he says sh- the dumbest shit. Yeah. I don't understand. He does. Like I'm not gonna hold that against the game. Yeah. But man. Ryuji is annoying as shit. I hope he has like a redeeming moment some at some point in this game because right now he drives me fucking crazy. But Nick, he, he just he just wants to get back on the the running the run the running team the running the track team track team yeah you know he's the, the shitty thing is he's really good in in, in battle yeah so I have to like endure <laughs> and until I get more party members that I can choose between yeah um but yeah I'm 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 really I'm really enjoying it. this is kind of like my uh, my deep dive right now. I'm kind of going back and forth between this and Hollow Knight, um, but I actually haven't played Hollow Knight in a few weeks, so I'm kind of I guess right now it's kind of this, at the moment. But uh, yeah, Persona Five. It's, it's pretty, the music's pretty fucking good. I know we're a late to the party. No, that's fine. The music's great. Oh, uh, dude, like I feel like I could just sit there and just like fl- jive with this game and just fl- I could, like I played it for like two hours straight, and a lot of that was doing the same shit over and over, which is you know grinding and you know combat combat yeah. mm-hmm. but like the music is so catchy and it just like flows from like transitions so from combat to like back in the world it, it's oh it's so good yeah it's so good i'm gonna i'm also gonna buy the sound the shit out of the soundtrack once i finish the game it's it's pretty damn good nice it's not a cheap soundtrack though it shit's 30 dollars yeah. pretty much everywhere i look um we have one more game i want to talk about i know uh we've talked about it before but you finished it correct tell us about your Qu- f- final quickly. moments yeah, I will go over the fact that I played and beat my first Yakuza game ever, Yakuza Zero. Um, great game, uh, hands down. I I I am sad that it's taken me so long to play a Yakuza. Yeah, game. It's, uh, I feel like that's kind of me too. I, like I feel like I'll I'll realize that the moment I I pop one in and start playing mm-hmm. it. Um, similar to what we were talking about with uh, uh, like Persona, it's all like the little stuff on the sides too that makes it makes like it great. You know, the, the story of this game is actually really good. Yeah. Uh, the main story, it's interesting. Uh, the the thing is, there are a lot of I think references. Does to the other main games. story tell, take itself seriously, or is it all kind of like that? Uh, no, the main story is fairly serious. Oh. Uh, you know, it's, it follows um, uh, Kiryu. Mm-hmm. Uh, two. It's, it follows two people, Kiryu and Majima. Uh, and Majima, Kiryu was kicked out of the uh, Yakuza mm-hmm. uh, for something he did. 
uh, Majima, well, hasn't been kicked out, but he did something and he's being punished. Uh. Um, and so you, you kind of jump back and forth between the two stories and like their main story, what they're trying to do is actually very fucking serious. Yeah. Uh, and, and eventually their paths intertwine, obviously. Um, the stories you know, but make their way towards each but other. But it's peppered with like really but humorous But everything stuff. on the side, not everything, I would say like, 85% of anything that's not the main story is fucking hilarious. Uh, you know, we've talked about it before, you know, there's, and I don't want to get too deep into sub stories just because they can be spoilery and they're, but they're, they're hilarious. I mean, we, we've talked about some on the, the show before, you know, meeting people. Uh, yeah. Uh, chicken. Uh, uh, don't, don't, don't let them, di- don't, don't tempt him down this path, Chris Davis. Well, no, that, that it's one's easy, not, It's easy to start talking about side we, paths. That's one we've already talked we, about. We've yeah. talked about that one before, and that one's not super spoilery, but it's just like, oh, you yeah. meet random people in the world who own shops. Yeah. And if you befriend them, because uh, Kiryu uh, is, is a, he is in real estate, so he buys buildings. Yeah. And, and if you befriend them, they will let you manage their building for you, uh, for them. Um, and so one of them owns a bowling alley. Um, and the thing is, if you enter this competition, uh, it's called uh, get a turkey for a turkey. So you have to bowl a turkey, which is three strikes in a row. And if you are successful, they give you a turkey as your prize. Um, so I finally do it. And I go up to the lady and she's like, here's your turkey. And she puts like a, a rooster on like the counter, like a chicken. That's not Live a turkey. Rooster. That's a cock. And, yeah. And, and Kiryu is like, that's, that's not a turkey. And she's like, oh. And she's like, well, you know. Sorry, we'll cook it all the same for you. And he's like, oh, no, no, no. He's like, oh, I'm going to keep it. And so he keeps the chicken and he names it Nugget. Is that yeah. is that anybody's first reaction when someone puts a chicken in front of them? No, probably thanks. Bernadette. I'll keep it. Oh. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so. That's not the best part of Nugget, though. So Chicken Nugget uh, becomes one of your managers for your real estate company and can manage properties. It's funny because you can play Yakuza Zero and it's like, so it's like fairly serious but like you know this is also a universe where things can be run by chickens yeah um and you know there's so many fun mini games that you can do um a lot of them you'll end up like kind of doing if you if you go down the path as majima he runs a cabaret club uh and in japan the cabaret clubs are where men come to get drunk and talk with women you know they they provide entertainment like oh they're they're delightful dinner company kind of like that like a host club yeah um a hostess club Hmm. Twinkies, um, but so yeah, he runs that, um, and which is actually a really fun mini game. Uh, uh, customers will come in. You have to assign them women. They they look for particular things like, hey, I want a woman that's funny and um, like a uh, uh, cute. But he doesn't care if she's pretty or like sexy or anything. Like he just like he wants funny and cute, or he wants someone that's talkative, or he does only want someone sexy. And you'll have this list of you know your roster of women that you are, that are working tonight, yeah. and you'll have to like assign them. Like oh, this woman will fit him well, and so you will assign him. And, and then like they'll like in their thing they'll be like, oh I need help, and they're like oh can you refill the ice or something. But they do these weird hand symbols. They're like they do this and hang they, up phone. They do <laughs> they do like this oh, he one. Wants ice. This one means that the guest needs more. Uh, another drink. Uh, this one needs refill the ice. There's this, which means a hot towel, and uh, this means the refill the ladies drink. What? The f- uh, yeah, but you have to learn their hand because she only wants a little bit. She's on. She's working. She only oh. wants a little bit. Oh, okay. uh, so you have to learn these hand symbols. Hand symbols. Um, and it's funny just because if it's one of the core women, there's like there's different ranking ones, which sucks because they're all based on real women. These are like real women they model these characters after, and like some of them are platinum, and some are gold, and some are silver, and some are bronze. Oh, that's so <laughs> um, unfortunate. But any of the platinum ones. Oh yeah, thank you. A uh, Re- uh, reborn uh, menu is another one. They'll go like this, which means they the guy wants a menu. Um, but uh, a- any of the platinum ones when he does it, like here you actually. There, sorry, Majima. There's like a cutscene, and Majima walks up, and I'm he's sorry. like, "Oh, like," and he does a thing, and then he's like, and then she's like, she's like, and she's like, "Okay, leave now," and he's like, yeah, he gives her the thumbs up, and uh, it's it's kind of fun. But anyway, oh, wait, um, aren't most women in this game models or porn actresses? Correct. Yes. So that in the, the game or just in certain parts of the game, pretty much every woman in this game that's named. Oh, okay. Is I thought it was just like all the women star. in like the cabaret or something. No. Oh. So they inadvertently rank porn actresses in your hostess club. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And we've talked about uh, that before. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, it's a really fun mini game. You're trying to like, uh, you're trying to take over other cabaret clubs. Yeah. Um, I really enjoyed that one. It's a lot of fun. Um, how long did like the actual story take? I mean. This is not a game I want to rush through, obviously, but like, mm-hmm. how long did you spend with the game as a 60 whole? 60 hours total oh, with the game. Damn. Um, but that's, I did like, out of like the hundred like sub stories that are d- there, I probably did like 
85 of them. Oh, okay. I did a yeah. lot of the sub stories. Are you, is, uh, this, is this now a series that's like, as soon as the next one hits, you're going to be like on board. So no. So I actually, I do have Kiwami, which is the remake of one. Yeah. Uh, I haven't started it yet, mainly because all of the games are fairly similar. Yeah. Uh, yeah obviously the sub stories will be different, but they all take place in the same like area. Yeah. So if I were to play that one right now, it almost feel like I'm playing more of the same game. Yeah. And I don't want to get burnt out on it, so yeah. I'm giving that like a a, a pause. Sure. I'm gonna For wait sure. a little while. Well, does, yeah. it, does anyone know that six comes out at the end of March? Correct. And that's the never mind. I'm sorry. I'm not gonna. They announced two gonna... more games today that are coming out at the end of March too. So Yakuza games? Yeah. Well, no, 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 no. <laughs> I was yeah, like, oh my god. How do they crank these out? Um, they did put out a trailer yesterday for some of the mini games that are in Yakuza Six. Yeah. Uh, One of them is you shake a baby. Nice. Oh God! Um, um, <laughs> but yeah, so going back, the the story of this game is great. I I do enjoy how it ended. Um, uh, it it had a weird kind of ending just because it seemed like there's a very abrupt change in the characters to almost make them similar to how they were in the first game. Yeah. Uh, just so it's like, oh, here's how they relate and stuff. It's like at the very end of the development, they realize, oh wait, we have to remember, we have to set this up. For yeah, the first game. kind of. Uh, but uh, like all of a sudden, one time in one scene, Kiryu is wearing like a red, uh, a red shirt with like a grayish suit instead, and his friend Nishiki is like, "Oh, why'd you change?" Blah blah blah, and all. It's like, wait, what? Uh, and then the the weird thing is, Majima uh, has a weird twist at the end, and so I will say, uh, his his story. I don't want to say his story is sad, but it kind of is. Like it's like, man, like I don't uh, want to say it's sad. Fucking my heart, sad. my heart breaks for Majima. Um, that sounds sad, no. <laughs> yeah, uh, but yes, a uh, fantastic game. Uh, I I I I really enjoyed it. Uh, I'm gonna wait, and I'm gonna as soon as I if this game goes on sale anytime in 2018, I'm gonna hop on it. The lowest I've seen it so far is 30 bucks. That's that sounds like a good price um, to me. I, I I almost picked it up once, but then I didn't because I had borrowed Crispy's copy. But now it's gone back up in price. I want to just get it on my shelf. That way, like. Kind of like Persona Five. It sat on my shelf for like for a while, but then eventually months, you're and like, then oh, I eventually yeah. popped that shit. Uh, I, I would recommend like after a while. I was playing on normal, yeah. and combat didn't get super difficult. Honestly, I think the reason I turned down the combat difficulty was because of Mister Shakedown, which is the guy who's ridiculously like strong oh, in combat, and he'll yeah, he just steals all your money. Yeah, and so I think that's why I, I don't think I necessarily needed to turn it down. But kind of I want to say it made the game more enjoyable. But I mean, combat wasn't like something I was ever super struggling with because yeah. of it. I, and I wasn't playing that game. I mean, it's a brawler, and I guess that's the point. But I wasn't playing it for the combat. I was playing it because I enjoyed the stories. Yeah, for yeah. sure, for sure. Um, you know, one thing I forgot to just real quick aside about Persona Five, what I was shocked, mm. absolutely floored by. Mm. I popped that disc game for the first time ever. Expected there to be a huge update. Patch, yeah. It's still running version one point mm. Like they haven't patched that game since its release. Mm. It is just a game they put on a disc, they send it out, no patches. What the fuck? Yeah. It's like the only game I can think of that's ever done that in the past, you know, five years. It's ridiculous. I mean, they're very fucking meticulous with their persona. I know. Games. That's incredible, especially considering how like you know, big the you game know, is. Nick, well, probably what happened was is the fact that it came out in Japan a year before it yeah, came so out they here. Just, yeah. They updated they, it and put it on the disc. They fixed all the issues, put them on the disc. So the 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 version, you know, 1.0 that we get in America is That's like a, great, a patched though. version of Japan. But yeah, That's but no, fantastic. that is good, yeah. It's definitely not the norm. Yeah. But uh, anyways, all right. I think we're coming up to the end of the first segment. Yeah. Uh, we'll we're gonna take a quick break. We come back. We got several news topics to mm-hmm. go over. Some mm-hmm. some weird stuff. Some cool stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then of course we will answer questions from our supporters on Patreon. If you are if you're watching us live and you're a supporter on Patreon, you have a few minutes left to get your questions in. We'll read through as many as, as we can tonight. Um, after the new segment and of course like I said at the, at the beginning of the next segment or at the beginning of the community segment we are going to announce the winners of our game of the year uh, survey winners um, so anyways if you're watching this live don't go anywhere we'll be back after this short if, if break. you're curious to know what Nintendo's labia looks like stay tuned <laughs> oh shit Welcome back to the show. Who's ready for the first new segment of 2018? I am. I am. And there's actually I some am. stuff to discuss All today. Right. Everyone, I'm sure, suck around to hear more about the Nintendo labia. 
<laughs> so let's yep. dive right in. Let's, that's where we're going Head with. first. Huh? We're going with labia. Yeah. All right. <laughs> let's talk about the Nintendo labia. This is the weirdest fucking thing. I think it's silly. Okay. For, yes. It is silly, especially... Okay. So Nintendo announced the, the Nintendo Labo, which we're going to affectionately call the labia here. Cause we're I'm sure it's not Labo. I, I seriously doubt it's Labo. <laughs> uh, which, I'll be honest, I heard people talking about this. I wasn't paying a whole lot of attention. I've been busy at work. Yeah. And then I was like, so what is this thing? And I looked it up, and I could not believe what I was seeing. Mm-hmm. After seeing everybody talk about it, I was like, wait, they're, they're, they're selling a bunch of cardboard do-it-yourself pieces that you can construct to put your 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 switch uh joy cons apparently it's pronounced yeah, labo labo no no one's gonna call it labo is there a reason behind that i mean like it's I, like you're in a lab i think they're trying to go for like laboratory yeah i guess so i mean it's weird like the, it's not necessarily surprising nintendo has always been weird about the way they name things mm-hmm. i think the switch is like by far the most coherent name that they've come up with for like one a of their decade. products in a decade. Yeah. Uh, so Labo is Labo for me, or Labo, or whatever Labo, you want to call it. Laboratorium. It's, is it's what definitely it's up there for me with like the Wii as like a weird ass fucking name. Yeah. Um, also, what is happening? Why? So, but hold on. So Why? people in chat are saying, "Oh, it's lab- it's lab- laboratory." Here's the problem. No, it's fucking not. They give you a bunch of cardboard, like like perforated cardboard. You punch it out, you fold it into shapes, and now it's like, oh, it's a fishing rod. Oh, it's a piano, and it's then you a stick your switch. peripheral thing. But the problem is, it's fucking cardboard. Yeah. Now they're, they're selling for like sixty to eighty I, bucks. That's the biggest problem right there is, is the fact that they're selling this for. If they were selling each one of these pieces as like, if this was like a thing where you could walk into a store and buy like a ten dollar thing that yeah. had. With this peripheral, or whatever, and like it was just that you could buy whichever ones you were interested in, mm-hmm. um, for like a reduced price. I feel like that'd be that'd be okay. I don't think that would be too egregious, and it'd be kind of cool, kind of a neat thing. No one's ever really done before mm-hmm. with their console, but like the way they're selling this is, I think, off. <laughs> you, so you do know that Nick, everything in here it isn't included in one thing. These are all different things. Yeah, and, and are they each priced? So some some of there there is like from I know limited amount about this. There's certain. I think packs. the robot one is its own like eighty bucks. Yeah. I'm assuming they're priced based on what they are, like kind of by level of complexity, maybe. Probably, um, there there are yeah they they range between like forty and eighty. Um, you know Nintendo goes out and they pay a dollar for cardboard and then turn around and they put some cuts in it and then they sell it for you know a, so, a huge up price so the game so the, the in, bulk of the price is coming from the game which is i guess is, is, it, just, is that just called the five mini games so the so yeah so obviously it's a mini game collection so mm-hmm. is that game called nintendo labo labo and I then guess. everything else is just kind of peripherals, peripherals to that game yeah it's 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 strange and the the, the how much does the game cost I th- well, I think you buy it in a bundle. Yeah, it's a, it's a bundle. for sixty, and it comes with the game, and then you buy the, and then it comes with whatever peripheral like it comes the in the box. Well, hold on, you, bundle you just with the five mini games is like sixty. Yeah, and then the robot one, which is completely separate, just by itself, is, is eighty. Yeah, and that does not come with a game. Does no, it not. Are you sure it, it doesn't? It's, it's a separate product. Jesus fucking Christ. That is fucking weird. I feel like here's the thing, though. So someone's gonna buy it. Their kid's going to build it, and it's going to be great, and then it's going to fucking break in an hour because no. it's cardboard. No, no, the kid's not going to build it because that's mm. fucking intricate. Sorry, the, the, Some of them the young teenager is going to do it. And young then, teenagers have no interest in buying this. <laughs> no. Then it's, they're going to spill their fucking Capri Sun on it, and it's going to get all warped. And their their Nintendo the the thing that holds your Nintendo Switch is gonna get loose and it's gonna fall out and shatter on the this ground. This shit is disposable yeah. and it needs to be priced as such. Yeah. Um. I, like, don't get me wrong. It's an interesting concept. It is. I, a, I, I do like the there. concept. It's way too fucking expensive for what it is. Yeah. It's. I. I feel like this is gonna be like this is like Nintendo's thing for 2018. Like they've mm-hmm. launched their Switch, and like this is like this kind of reminds me of. Uh, what was the well, it's like Skylanders, right? Yeah, sure. Like that was kind of a huge thing for. Like, well, th- this a is making years. me think of all the peripherals they made for, for when the, the Wii, Wii. when yeah. the Wii first came out, and there were so many peripherals and so many goofy things. And I somewhere in here in my house have that fucking Zelda like crossbow thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I mean, like, don't get me wrong. Like that that fishing rod that looks cool. Yeah. I, I I like the concept of these. These look like they would be cool to make 
you know, like, but then I, I wouldn't want to fucking play with it. I'd want to, like, set it off to the side. I yeah. definitely want to try this and out. And I also don't want to pay, like, 60, 80 bucks for it. I want to try this out on the stream. Oh, no, I feel we like definitely, it, as I feel a like site, we will, we'll get it. And it'll be goofy and fun I'm, and whatever, but... I'm more interested to see what third-party plastic peripheral knockoffs oh. are going to come out that are going to be cheaper yeah, than this fucking thing. <laughs> And they'll last longer and be better. But the cardboard won't have Nint the Nintendo Switch logo Who on the, the side. Who cares? <laughs> My sarcasm meter really is off, isn't yeah. it? I mean, just look how fucking intricate these things are. Why was he like jerking off that it's bird? It's fucking intimidating. It does look weird. Although it looks like you can make like a proton pack. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, you can that's make the a robot pack. You can make a kick pedal for a drum. But well, the problem is, you have to put your switch like Joy-Con in there, and then you're like stepping on your fucking you're switch Joy-Con. You're building a mini fucking piano mm. inside this goddamn thing. Yeah, it's it. This is this is. I, I don't know. This is gonna be one of those things. I don't know what the. It's gonna be really fascinating to see how successful this ultimately ends up being. This could end up being Nintendo's first either like major experiment slash failure with the Switch. Um, or it could be it could be huge like this could be like the biggest thing since sliced bread I have no fucking idea um, One it's, it's hard to predict with Nintendo <laughs> yeah they got the variety kit and then they got the robot kit and the thing is I gotta wonder they said that like so you, so you've got to be so whether you pick the variety kit or the robot kit I'm sure they both come with the game no no the variety kit comes with the five game oh the game robot game is its own separate robot game, game. Is separate, which supposedly people are believing that the robot game is uh, that this leftover is, Miyamoto this robot This is all game a bunch game. of assumption, too. We're not 100% yeah. yeah. on any this of this. This is all kind of speculatory right now. This, they're still, like... All, well, we've, all we've had right now is the announcement, and they've launched a website for it, and they've started taking pre-orders for this oh, shit. Oh, wow, you're right. Which, yeah, so uh, Best Buy has them for cheaper. Uh, but, yeah, the Nintendo Labia Variety <laughs> Kit for the Nintendo Switch, which, yeah, comes, comes with the game, it looks like, and then those, you know, the piano, the little... Uh, fishing rod, the house, and then yeah. whatever that one thing was, and That's, then the robot thing. Is, wait, is that sixty? That is seventy. Seventy. And the robot one is eighty. God damn! But like people in chat are right. This is like pure profit for Nintendo. Oh no! It's it. They they are gonna make a shit ton of money. Like yeah. I said, honestly, this cardboard, each thing of cardboard, probably cost them like even two dollars, if even. I mean, yeah, I understand that they have to, like, perforate it and stuff, and I'm sure they had to build machines to do it, but if Nintendo sells, like, a thousand of them, I'm sure they will make a huge profit already. I mean, not I'm fascinated. Yeah. I, I am fascinated. I want to see what the fuck this <laughs> this fucking is. I don't know if this is something that I'll ever play or try. I'm hoping this also doesn't become, like, a weird gimmick that, like, people start working into their, like, oh, I don't think that's AAA gonna games and whatnot. I don't think that's going to happen. But uh, they're they're setting the foundation for that being a possibility. You never know. Like, like, PlayStation, what? VR? Fuck that. We've got cardboard. <laughs> perforated <laughs> cardboard. Yes! Uh, I don't know. It, it's, it looks charming. I don't know. <laughs> it's like a weird combination of, like, gaming, like, video games and, like, toys. I don't know. This is very Toys R Us to me. Mm -hmm. um, but we'll see. This, is, this comes out 420. Blaze it. 420 Blaze it. I don't know. <laughs> it's going to be a little... Uh, you know, I'm not gonna go into that. <laughs> you know, this 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 is weird. It's definitely the first big. Don't build cardboard surprise. and get high. This is one of the first big, like, weird, shocking things of 2018. I think in the industry, it's gonna be an interesting year. This is certainly setting the. Uh, this is this is setting the tone for 2018 in a weird way. So uh, yeah, I guess we'll revisit this more as we learn more about it, and I'm sure we'll probably do something with it on the stream here when it comes out because that looks like it's going to be goofy ass. We'll we'll have a stream stuff. dedicated to building the goddamn. No, things. I want a stream of just just silence with a camera fixated on Brad trying to build trying it. to trying to build the most complex <laughs> thing they have in here. Just like oh my god, I would love I would watch the show. Oh, you know that. you know it's going to be the piano. It's going to be the worst. Oh my god. Like, oh. there were strings, and there were rubber bands in there, and, like... Do you have to know how to play the piano once you build it? <laughs> oh, man, you can play, like, chopsticks. <laughs> oh, my God. That's about it. In interesting. That's the Nintendo Labia. Labo. Labo. <laughs> whatever the hell it's called. Um, so, I'm just gonna let you pick the next, uh... Okay. And we'll see where we go from here in, uh, well, news -wise. Dude, I wonder if that robot one has, like, a height restriction on it. Because you have to have things on your feet that attach to the back, and then things go up to your head and stuff. And I'm I'm, I'm curious. That's fucking bizarre. Well, you, you wear it like a backpack. Uh, yeah, you can go ahead and do that one. That yeah, let's good. just go up. Okay, so, fine. So it do, hold on. Oh, sorry, sorry, I, we're yeah, still I'm, on labia. I'm, I was looking at the, the the listing for it, and it was saying that the the 
robot one does come with Nintendo Lo- Lo- Labo robot kit software. So it looks like it does. It, the robot yeah, might it's, be its own game. Yeah, it's a separate it's, software, it's, like a standalone game. Again, people were speculating that's Project Giant Robot just reborn, as which this. was the Miyamoto thing. Yeah, gotcha. Interesting. We'll see how that goes. The next bit of news: Fox Next is a studio now owned by Twenty First Century. Twenty. Fox. Thank you, Twenty First Century Fox. They which have is, an, which is about to be owned by Disney. Which is about to be owned by Disney. Uh. They have announced they are developing a new Aliens ga- game in the Aliens mm-hmm. franchise. It's a shooter. It's an online shooter. A online shooter? They specifically said online shooter. God damn it. Any semblance of excitement I got for it just went out the fucking window. I didn't Ooh. even see online. I read an entire article. With it and no one ever said anything about online. It just said shooter everywhere I saw. Oh, my fucking God. Who wants this? I- Give me Alien Isolation 2. It's all I want. I mean, we all want a- Alien Isolation 2. But the, the, I think... My takeaway from the wording of this of this press release is that they aren't specific about alien or aliens in concept. If mm-hmm. it's a shooter, it's aliens. It's got to be an you alien. Think so, yeah, like alien. Would if be they're a making bad an shooter. online shooter, they're going for. I think they're going more for an action oriented game as opposed to a atmospheric probably game. Yeah. So I I feel like they would be. I feel like this is probably going to be something more akin to aliens, colonial marines. Maybe now, maybe just as long as it's not AVP focused. Chris, you did start recording that again, right? Yeah, yeah. sorry, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Um, if like if, if they're trying to like capture the whole aliens colonial marines thing and do it right this time, that could be interesting. But like, like online shooter could imply co op, it could imply competitive. That's but true. I, I think the aliens franchise it makes more sense to be um co op unless they're doing a thing where you're like one team is the aliens the other team is, is the marines or something i mean i can I don't pull know. up the press release if you want to read it no I, it's okay i don't think it's one way or another it's not really what i was hoping for to come out of like what it wasn't what i was hoping for to come out of aliens after playing something like aliens isolation which i think is the perfect the like the ultimate alien gaming experience mm-hmm. at this point i don't pretty good <sighs> I don't know. What else is? In the we'll news? see what happens. We'll talk more about this when they actually show something of it, and we have to, and we have something to say about it. Um, the next one is actually out of the Nintendo Mini Direct, which mm-hmm. we're going to talk about in a minute. But, yeah, but it's easily it's, the most. It's easily the biggest news out of that um, event. So, uh, Dark Souls Remastered has been announced. Mm-hmm. The original Dark Souls is coming to everything, yep. including the Nintendo Switch. Yep, and. This is another one of the situations where it's like, oh, cool! I want to—I play Dark Souls again. I'd love to play it on my Switch, but at the same time, like, I kind of want to just have the PS4. For, for I don't PS4 think version. I would play that on the go. Yeah, That's I, a tiny fucking screen. I know it's just one of those things where it's kind of like for I, how precise you need to be in that game. Not to mention precise, but also the the depth of like the world and how many things you have to keep track of. And also, like, I remember like playing that game and like practically feeling like I was gonna break my controller from holding it so tightly. Yeah. Like when I, especially when you get into like tense combat scenarios and whatnot like i don't really want to risk snapping my switch into granted you don't always play it on on the go but still like you were saying i think i would almost rather the ps4 is so much more i mean i've already kind of decided to myself i think it's really great that it's going to come out for the switch i think that's just that's that's fantastic for the for both the series i want want more third-party games on the switch and I, i think that's you know that's telling whatever whatever like it kind of just shows you that I mean, assuming that it, it turns out well and it, it performs well and everything, like mm-hmm. it kind of shows you what the Switch is capable of. But for a thing, I've already kind of planted my foot firmly in the PS4 version. I'm definitely going to pick that up because um, when I played Dark Souls One, I played it on PC, but I I had to use the uh, what was that mod called? The uh, DS Fix. Yeah, DS Fix. I had to use DS Fix to get Madurante, it to run. Yeah, yeah. Same so, here. Uh, but hey, with mods, you could have it say "Thanks, Obama" when you die. That's true. That is true. And uh, um, the remastered version is going to play up to 4K 60 on, on PC. And on PS4, too, I think. Uh, no, the I think the, the PS4 version is 1080 30. Huh. Either way. Um, but the, the interesting thing about it is the multiplayer has been upgraded, actually. Doesn't it also have the DLC for it? I It's going to have, like, yeah. all the... Yeah. Yeah. Which I don't think I play. I played... I played one of the deals. I played all of it, I think. But but so, the think. the multiplayer, it's a instead of it being up to four players in one world, it's now six. That's mm. kind of cool. They did confirm though that it's not going to be cross platform though. 
which you know not shocking that's not not shocking uh but it is cool to see that game come back now it just kind of makes me wonder what when the hell they're going to do something with demon souls if ever but you know that's a that's a sony property hey they're doing something they're taking the servers offline (laughs) that's no that's depressing (laughs) thanks nolan um all right let's move on next one oh the next one is actually uh microsoft related on the other side yeah fable there is a new Fable game rumored to be in development by Playground Games. What Playground, kind of Fable game is my question? Like a traditional, like Fable, actual Fable game. Fable 4. Now, this, so if an acorn falls in the ground. God damn it, no one. <laughs> that, I'm pretty sure this, so this was, this is rumored to be in development by Playground Games, which is, if I'm correct, the studio that made Forza, uh, Forza Horizon. Is that? I'm not sure. I don't. Someone in the chat can confirm this for me. I'm pretty sure Playground made, is has worked on Forza before. I think they did the Horizon games. It's I believe it's pronounced Forza. Forza. But I'm they, sorry. They helped out on Forza. There's no of, tea uh, in a bunch there. of things. Yeah. Um. Now, I love Fable. In fact, I've recently considered going back to play Fable Two because I actually Fable Two is a good game. Yeah. I, yeah. Th- um. So. I've the the, the, I, the thought of playing a Fable game without Peter Molyneux's involvement, but purely excites but, me. But purely, <laughs> like, it, like it, on one hand, it excites me. Yeah. Actually, sorry, this is all excitement. I'm excited that it's that Molyneux it's, would not be involved, mm-hmm. but at the same time, a lot he is responsible for a lot of like what that game start that series started as, sure. which atmospherically and, and conceptually, I thought it was all really cool. He just had a tendency to kind of go off the rails. Um, so the idea of a, of a, a Fable game being developed by someone else, but still drawing inspiration think, from what he kind of established. Think about it like this, Nick. Star Wars. Episodes 4, 5, and 6, George Lucas had like no control over them, and they were good movies. Yes. Episodes 1, 2, and 3, George Lucas had complete Total control. control. And they Ruined were shit. Him. Yes, <laughs> I'm. I'm Are you just comparing because Peter Molyneux to George Lucas? Just because someone has a great idea doesn't mean sure. they can execute it. Sure, well. no. And I, part, the real part of the problem with Peter Molyneux was that you put him in front of the press, and that's where things go. Oh shit. yeah, he would just lie out of I, his I'll ass. I'll be honest. I, I I think I said this on my four player minute a few weeks ago or months ago. Um, but I listened to that. <laughs> also, according to Deputy Dangle, Playground Games has only made Forza Horizon yeah. games. So this is like their first <laughs> non Forza game. But hey, like. Team Fable Nin- Horizon? Team Ninja made a Souls clone, and it turned out fucking That's true. fantastic. So I'm willing to give them benefit of the doubt. And Creative um, Assembly made Alien Isolation. Yeah, exactly. And not to mention uh, Forza Horizon, if I, as by all accounts, I think is a pretty well-received Forza game. Mm-hmm. They make good games. Um, but I listened to, I guess, IGN's... Well, IGN has a podcast where they they strictly... Li- they just do like, hour-long interviews with, like big names in the industry that's where i listened to that randy pitchford interview yeah and uh I, they had one peter molyneux on there and as crazy as those guys are and as controversial as they are they make for fascinating interviews so i'd recommend listening to them but at the same time like like listening to that interview made me want to play fable 2 again but then i was like you're you're crazy you're crazy peter molyneux you're fucking crazy i don't really want you near fable again Oh, definitely so like not. this is kind of cool. That's not going to happen. So w- this is kind of cool. Like I'd love to see what Fable Four looks like without Peter Molyneux's involvement, but still obviously drawing I want, inspiration. I, 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 mean, I Microsoft really want bought Lionhead. They bought the Fable franchise. Yeah. Yeah. Peter Molyneux left. He's on twenty two cans. Yeah. yeah. The I really want to see the first trailer for this game, whatever this game is. I don't even know how long this has been in development. This well, is this I. is all based on I, this I don't is all care. A rumor. But right I now. really want the first trailer to be like, like a camera panning around, like a like a cart. Like a horse-drawn cart, but it looks fucking amazing. All the detail and the lighting and the shadows. You know, Forza games always look so. Yes. Nice. And it's just like a cart, and just kind of be like, like oh, it's like like just like Fable the Rise yeah. too. Yeah, oh my God. that'd be pretty the, good. The, the guys who make the the Forza guys. games and the games always look so fucking. The, I don't get me wrong. I've never played a Forza game, but I've watched some trailers and like, God damn, Man, those cars. I've been look trolled nice. by Forza Horizon trailers so many times. The biggest one for I think was E3. Was it this year or last year? The year before that. At the Microsoft conference, they start showing a trailer for the new Forza Horizon game. I didn't know it was Forza Horizon. Yeah. They're just panning across these beaches, and you see like a kangaroo. It and I was like, so I was like, oh good. shit! I, it was before they announced Horizon. Yeah. I was like, is this the new game from Gorillas? Is it fucking crazy? It looks amazing. And then a fucking car goes along. Yeah. I was like, son of a bitch! Fuck, it's Forza. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. So I want to see like a trailer that kind of throws you off, and it's just like this fucking just panning around a really intricately detailed cart. Yeah, that would be dope. Mm-hmm. And, there, and there's like a narration being done by like Jeremy Clarkson or something. Yeah. Like th- talking about I it. I think, I think, you know what? I would love for Fable to, to make a 
to make a real comeback and be like, dude, a, I a don't you're not the only one. Fable, like, while those games have issues, I've like they're good games. Yeah, I enjoy that universe. Like, I enjoy the concept. You know, I the en- worst part of Fable One was that it was too short. Yeah. I wanted more of it. You um, should, did you play the Lost Chapters? Yes. Does that added like a third of the game? Yeah. Yeah, even then though, it was still like a fifteen-hour game, I think, or something. No, I've I've probably spent like at least forty. Maybe hours. I didn't play Lost Chapters. I don't remember. I need to remaster that so I can play that again. They I did don't... what? Fable Anniversary. It's on. Is that only on PC? It's on PC and Xbox. Xbox like Xbox. Xbox, Xbox Three Sixty. Oh shit! They remade the game in Unreal. Hmm. I did not know this existed. I'm gonna look that up later. Is this Anyways. Fable, it's good news. I'm excited. I want to see more of this. It's probably going to be a long time before we see probably, this. Yeah. Um, I doubt we'll see that at E3 or anything this year. I could be wrong. Who knows? Maybe they've been working on this in secret for a while, but we'll see. Um, next up, we have... Uh, no, that's the Labo. What's up uh, above that? Oh, and then the last one, we kind of just, we're going to kind of go over all the stuff that was announced during the uh, Direct, the Mini Direct, which is... Something they do now. Yep. Uh, it's like I love these Nintendo Directs. It, it's it's kind of a really cool thing that's unique to Nintendo. I love it. Um, but these, I guess, mini is just stuff they didn't want to save for like yeah. a full blown direct. Why are you uh, covering chat, Chris Davis? What I'm is not, wrong with I'm you? I'm moving over All so right. you can actually read it. All right. We already talked about Dark Souls Remastered. Mario Tennis Acres for the Switch. Mm-hmm. Aces. Is that Aces? Can you hear me the controller? Can someone give me glasses? Oh yeah. God, no, do I, I need glasses? It. I got it, Nick. I got it. <laughs> uh. Mario Tennis Aces. I was like, Acres doesn't make any fucking sense. Um, I don't know. I'm not a huge Mario Tennis fan, but hey, I, I guess it was about time. This is this is without a doubt going to be. Oh right? yeah, of course. With the with the Joy Cons, yeah, totally. About goddamn time. But you know, that's cool. That could be fun. I want a new Strikers. Oh yeah, those were good. That yeah. dude, my, my roommate in college, of all things, like he didn't play a lot of games, but he was super crazy addicted to Mario Strikers. I always forget that was a thing that existed. Donkey <gasps> Kong Country. Hold on. What? If Nintendo... Sorry. Oh, God. Taking a step backwards. To Nintendo, Are you going back to the labia? Labia. Fuck. If they don't put out like a labia that's the virtual boy, they're fucking idiots. Like a cardboard virtual boy. That is the failed Nintendo console from 19... 19- like the... What, yeah. I think... No, actually, in the trailer, you saw someone wearing it like a VR headset, I think. Something in a way, yeah, 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 they did. Yeah, I'm pretty they sure. They better put out a Nintendo Labia Virtual Boy. <laughs> All right. Anyway, Co- Coming back to Nintendo Direct Mini. Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. Um, is getting a port. It's getting a port, port on the Switch. To, Switch, yeah. to be honest, I've wanted, this is a game that's been on my list. Yeah, games I never to play played for a it, while. I agree. And, Honestly, I still, I, if I pull up my Amazon wish list now, that game still is there. still on my Amazon and, wish list. You know why? Because it's still probably pretty expensive. Yes. <laughs> and you can now play as Funky Kong. Yes. Mm. So that's a double jump. Now that's a meme. <laughs> funky kong uh, but hey i've heard really good things about donkey kong country and you know it is retro studios they make yep. good stuff um so i'll probably play that uh kirby star allies i don't know much about this anybody know anything about it's one this? of the three new kirby games yeah new kirby game oh yeah mm-hmm. is this the first time they showed that or is this i think uh, they, I, I think yeah. they announced it at e3 gotcha um the next one was kind of a weird random one the world ends with you final remix I forgot about that game. Yeah, yeah. On the DS. I forgot about it too. Isn't that a that's a DS game? It's a DS mm-hmm. game. So how's that going to work? Is it, it the... well, it's a DS game, and then it got an iOS and Android port mm. that which they rebuilt the controls to be for one player only. Okay, so then they're probably just bringing the, the so it doesn't need two screens anymore. Version, yeah. Well, yeah, I think I think that's what they're doing. The so end. yeah, this must be that. Yep, because that's all that would work. And they're adding like a new epilogue as well as a new. A new side campaign thing that gets to the heart of the story in quotation marks. Is the world ends with you? Like, was that a well received game? I don't. It, remember. it was well received, and, and the soundtrack is kind of a. Yeah, lot. I mean that doesn't that doesn't surprise me. I mean it, it it draws a lot of comparisons, obviously, to Kingdom Hearts. Yeah. Oh yeah, very um, much. Yeah, yeah. It was that. It was the same kind of. Uh, but isn't it? Style. Isn't yeah, it also pretty kind of like good? A, pretty good reviews. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it does. Yeah. The only the only catch with this port. This upscaled port is that it's sixty bucks. Sixty dollars. That's fucking yeah. ridiculous. That's kind of ridiculous considering that game came out when, like uh, two thousand eight. Fuck. Oh yeah. Ten year old so, DS port is sixty. It better. It better have. It ridiculous. better have some like serious upgrades. Like yeah. like it better look sharp as hell. Like they, I would hope they would like rebuild the game from the ground up for the Switch, but it's probably not the case. 
uh, Chloe and Chess says they've added an epilogue. So I don't, I don't know what that means. So? I never played the game. Yeah. Um, it's 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 a fucking there better it's a be remake. More, there better be more content bucks. though. By default, a remake can be no more than forty dollars. I think That's like fair. I think like look, Shadow of the Colossus was rebuilt from the ground, fucking up for PS4. It's forty dollars. Yeah. I think this is outrageous that they're charged sixty bucks for it. But hey, people will That's probably buy it. You're taking days. a game that originally retailed for what thirty? DS game, it probably was thirty or forty. That yeah. might be a game that if if I ever play that on Switch, if it like gets good reviews or something, like I would wait. That's I would wait until that game is used or something yeah. and buy it. Um, I I mean you. Couldn't find the original release used. It was actually yeah. kind of a scarce. I, I, were, I was working at GameStop when that game. Okay, came so out. it might not officially be sixty dollars. No, it, it says Best Buy, Amazon, and uh, although those prices can change. 60. Well, yeah, uh, confirmed what sixty? Who said it? I mean, GameStop, Best Buy. A lot of times, Amazon. here's it's, the thing. A lot of times, those it's online... December thirty first release date, sixty dollars. They just have default things they put. They in put sometimes. placeholders up there. I I don't trust Square Enix. Fair enough. But you apparently trust Konami. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But, uh, oh, sorry. Low blow. Low blow. We're, we're gonna we're gonna have that conversation next week. I'm, I'm, I'm Real Warriors Definitive I'm Edition in my ears on the Switch the because we need a port of all the Wii U games. Yeah, but hey, that's pretty much what they're doing. The, the Switch library is growing. That's yeah. all that matters. As long as it runs better. Yeah. And oh yeah. Didn't it run? The content, didn't it run poorly? I guess on the Switch. Yeah, it was. It would rub some. It would run. It would run sub twenty five. Yeah, Jesus times. Christ. Uh, SNK hero heroines hero, heroin. SNK heroin. Heroines. Hero, oh, I'm sorry. Heroines tag team frenzy. Don't know much about this to be honest, but hey. It's another SNK fighting game starring the ladies of the SNK. Is universe. it a port or is this a new game? It's a new game. Cool. Um, East eight. Keep La- reading. Lacrimosa of Dana. Dana. <laughs> that that's a wonderful name. That's a Brad yeah. game. All the way. I'm yeah. sure he'd know more about it. Oh, no. He's already been tweeting and talking about oh, it. Oh, I'm sure. Holy shit. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's uh, thick. There's a lot of... <laughs> that's thick. This What's one's you... good. Why is she... There are a lot of scantily clad Why is she ladies dressed... in this new Why game. is she wearing a cowl? You get to milk her. Oh, God. God damn it. I asked for that. I really mm-hmm. did. Um... Yeah, anyways, East 8, I'm sure you'll be hearing about that once Brad's back on the show, so I'll kind of right. save that for him. Here comes him. Chris Davis' Game of the Year. Oh, Payday 2. <laughs> you should be excited for this, Chris Davis. I'm not excited for this. Why? It's Payday 2. It was a great game three years ago. It's done. Stop making fucking DLC for it. They're making DLC or a port? They've been... Well, it's... I mean, it's going to be a port with like a collection of a bunch of the DLC, but you know there's going to be a bunch that's not on the disc that they have no, you to can't, download. You can't blame them. God, that is thick. Look at that. Look, Look at that, that curve. Both, yeah, I know. That's not... Put your dicks away. Dude, She this <laughs> this right here? Both two Cs. Kind of looks like dick butts, but the way his body <laughs> comes down and curves. Oh, my God. And that tail's kind of like a is, dick. I can't show what's on the television right now. But no, I think he links it in chat. Yeah, I did. This is... The, yeah, he links it. Yeah. He's, I'm still he's, confused. He's rubbing the mouse all over her, her curvy thighs. I'm, I'm not rubbing it. I'm fucking outlining what I'm referring to. Okay, sorry. Why are we still talking about S and K? Let's let's move on. Uh, yeah. Fee? I don't... Is this Fee or Faye? I'm going to guess Fee. Uh, this is that uh, EA mm-hmm. indie game. Yep. Um, it looks that... Re- reminds me strangely of Ori in the Blind Forest every time I see it. Um, but it's coming out on February 16th. I guess this this was more of an announcement of the release date. I think. Yep. Um, February 16th on the Switch. Um, As least it's not in fucking March. True. Uh, Celeste. Prince says he's pretty sure it's Faye. Really? I Damn think it. it's Iron Faye. Whatever. I'm anyway. sure we'll find out when the game comes out. Celeste. Uh, I don't know what this is, but it's an action platformer. Let's Madeline know. climb any surface on Sol. Okay, I can't read the rest of it, but. On Celeste Mountain, if she has the stamina. Playing in assist mode, let players tweak the difficulty. <laughs> this, not... sound, this sounds like a Breath of the Wild, but less cool. Yeah, exactly. Moving on. Um, the last few bits uh, from this direct were announcements for DLC and game updates. Super Mario Odyssey gets a new mini game called Balloon World. Yay. Um, mm. Which I think it's supposed to be like Balloon Fight. It's probably going to be lame. For a mini Yeah, new modes. Does it say anything about adding additional moons? <laughs> or maybe worlds. Maybe some new worlds. No, they'll just add moons. They don't, uh, they don't yeah. have time for worlds. Mario Rabbids Kingdom Battle DLC. Um, a new hero. Oh, yeah, they're Donkey adding Kong. Donkey Kong. 
an additional feels like he should have been in that game to begin sure. with. Sure, but that yeah. game they they had the rabid Donkey Kong. They I mean, did. Yeah, he was a boss, but like, let's be fair. Like that game was that game felt feature complete, felt content complete. I played that game for like twenty plus hours. I don't feel like it was like I don't feel like that was any there was like any agree, a case of like egregious like cutting stuff out of the game so they could leave it out for DLC. Um, and then the last one is Pokemon Tournament DX Battle Pack. It gets new Pokemon Meh, to fight. Whatever, who cares? Woo! Pokemon yeah. Tournament. Yeah, All right. That's Anyways, it. that's cool. Like uh, mini like mini directs directs. I'm always excited now when they start when oh, these totally, directs yeah. come up. So uh, they're keeping that Switch train rolling. So I think that concludes news for the week. There's there is one more that I didn't mention. Uh, so Sunday is going to be the 20th anniversary of the release of Resident Evil 2. Okay. And as we all know, Capcom oh, has been working on Resident Evil 2 remake, remake for about three years now. Yeah. Oh, yes. Coming up on, coming up on three you years. You say working on it for three years, that's starting the moment that they announced that game by saying they went into an office and said, we want we to make it. this, and they were like, yes. Yeah. Yes, we do it. Uh, but... Capcom marketing is starting to step up things. There was a tweet from their Division One, which supposedly is working on the game mm-hmm. uh, today, featuring a the dummy finger for Resident Evil Seven. I think your mic is. I think your mic needs to be reseated is again it? or something. Sorry, hold that thought for just a moment. I think. Can you reseat it, Chris Davis? I can't reach. Oh, I'm doing it from there is easier. The second one, yeah. Hold, please. Okay. Okay. How about now? Uh, I think that's better. Okay. So anyway, Division 1 tweeted out today uh, a picture of a dummy finger from Resident Evil 7 and the edge of a typewriter, um, which, by the way, typewriter's not present in Resident Evil 7. Correct. No. And uh, as well, there's been some there's been some tweets and rumors, and coinciding with the anniversary, there might be something going on. There might be, and I hope, I hope to God you're right, because I want to see what the fuck that thing is. Cause that, you know, I yes. Well, you said what? What day was it? This Sunday. Yes. So, next week we may have something to say about Resident Evil Two Remake. Who knows? Um, if it doesn't happen, then who knows when the fuck we'll see that game? But this would be a, this would be a good time for them to say something about it for sure. Also, um, I don't know all the details, but Capcom's evidently working on a new dinosaur game. A new what? Dinosaur game. Okay, so Capcom historically has made Dino Crisis great. Dino Crisis 2, great. Dino Crisis 3, not so great. And what was that? What, what was, there was another... Like, Dino Stalker. Dino Stalker. Yeah, I don't necessarily get excited when I hear Capcom making dinosaur games, Chris Davis. I know what you're, you're looking at me like you think I should be over the moon about well, no, this. Well, it's like... like in, in the history of Capcom dinosaur games, it's like a, a 50-50 chance. Sure. They have a the solid math. 50-50% chance of making a good dinosaur game. Lord knows we need one. I'll take it. Uh, we'll see what happens. All right. Anyway, let's move on to the community. This is our first community segment for 2018. Nolan. Yay. So we have some new patrons. You're going to bust out that new jingle that we recorded professionally. The community. A- community. We'd like your buttholes now. All right. So uh, Wait, what? we have this, some new patrons. Um, I don't know if I read all of these, so I might repeat a couple. Did I talk about 4PP Fan 1994? I think so. Oh, that sounds familiar. And Yanatic and James P. I Thank think, you. I think we mentioned some of those names, but here's some that definitely are new. Uh, Imasmi, Imasmi, how? What is it? Imasmi, E M A S S M I. yeah. How you said it? Imasmi. <laughs> Imasmi. Uh, a new patron. We also have uh, Fudgy. Fudgy. And Dragon Slayer Wielder. Hey, Dragon Slayer Wielder was in chat a while ago. I yeah. saw him. Thank uh, you, guys. So thank you to those new patrons. We, we definitely appreciate, appreciate your patronage. Your patronage. Uh, now let's get to some questions. Reminder. Actually, real quick, real quick reminder. Too late. Patreon, Patreon related. Uh, can't stress this enough. If you're a supporter on Patreon, not only can you su- can you submit questions for us every week to answer on the show, but you also get 24 hour early access to every single podcast we release, and they don't have ads on them. That's true. So this podcast that we're recording right now will be available tomorrow morning for 24 hours, no ads, exclusive to Patreon supporters. Just Brought to you by the there. smooth taste of Camel cigarettes. Oh, God, what the fuck? <laughs> I thought you were going to say Colt 45. <laughs> or Labia. I thought I was going to go with Labia. I don't know, it was an ad. So now it has an ad. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
shit. Dude, are camels still around? <laughs> Yes. I don't smoke cigarettes, so I don't yes, know. Yes, Camel is still around. Probably. All right. Uh, let's get to some questions from our patrons. Uh, first question this week from Wingless. This question is specifically for Chris Davis. Oh, <laughs> shit. Would you rather be poor but help people or become incredibly rich by hurting people? <laughs> I don't know what, what? I don't know what Chris Davis Why did. Why is this directed at me? I don't know what Chris Davis did to warrant this question what directed did I at do? him. You didn't answer the question. It sounds like you did something really greedy or something. I have no idea what I did, because usually I I like to play as the good guy in everything. Well then Except it sounds like life. that you just answered so the question. So is that your is that your answer? You wanna poor and help people? Yeah, like we're talking like destitute. <laughs> like destitute poor? Yeah. That's fucking rough. That is, I don't know, like, I would be interested in answering this question, <laughs> but I don't really want to. It sounds stressful as hell. Oh. Uh, you know what? I have, is, is there, like, a return on no, my investment of, like, do do people say yes, thank you, get lot, you for No, you get lots services? of money and you hurt people. No, he's talking about, if, is if there I'm a, a good guy and I'm poor. Yeah, if he's good and he's poor, well, what yeah, do you, you get, get out of it? Yeah, you get gratitude. Gratitude and recognition for doing good things. People will smile at you. Even but then they might... They might scrunch up your nose, Even their nose, because you're, prob- you're smelly, because you're poor. Maybe you're, they'll feed me. You're probably homeless. Maybe. Um, I guess I'll go with the poor thing. <laughs> Goddamn morality. Such, so committed. No, it, I'll be honest. I I have no. I, I I I my conscience would kill me. I'd I'd have to go with. I have, the, I have an easy answer for this one. What? Uh, I would uh, become incredibly rich by hurting people because I would become an executioner for capital punishment. <laughs> So I don't think bad people. I don't think you get to ch- okay. decided. I'm rich. You're right. poor. Shut up. Of, okay. <laughs> Done. Uh, next question from Arxidus. Um What has been long? What has been longest time? What has been the longest time you've spent wiki diving oh. that you can remember? What was the subject? So what is the what is the most amount of time we spend going down like a like a, a rabbit hole, hole in, in Wikipedia? Yeah. yeah. Um. That's is tough. it Wikipedia or like you're talking about like yeah you said wiki hole, wikis so I mean yeah whatever um oh man I don't do a lot of deep dives into Wikipedia but <laughs> this is gonna sound really weird <laughs> like every time anytime I'm watching like a like a like a true crime thing or like you know like when I like I was watching this is probably not the longest time but like the one that comes to mind is when I was re- recently watching that show on Netflix the the David Fincher show Mindhunter. Mm-hmm. About the uh, creation of the uh, behavioral analysis unit and the first serial killers and everything, I got really interested in like all like serial killers. You and got sort of like really interested in serial like, so because I'm they start name, they start name dropping serial killers and stuff, and I was like, oh, that's fascinating. So I started like Wikipediaing them while I was watching the show and just like reading up on them as I was. So like, you know, I feel like it's that kind of stuff. It's usually true crime related stuff. I end up. How long was it before you got to I don't, a Dexter I don't, fan page? I don't need. I don't need to go to. Dexter's Wikipedia page. I mean, it's not all lo- that shit's up here. It doesn't here. take long for him to get to his homepage. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> all that all that knowledge is up here, Chris Davis. I don't I don't need Wikipedia. Uh, I don't think I've shit. ever really dived too deep into wikis. I mean, maybe the most I've ever spent on one is like an hour or two, like kind of clicking on a few things. I'm not really into wikis. I personally far, fall more into YouTube holes. Yeah, on for sure. like for, for me, it's a lot of stuff like I've sat in bed for two hours past my recommended bedtime. Well, I'll watch just, like 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 things like like sometimes I'll do like like watch woodworking or I'll watch like fucking like this old house has a YouTube channel and I will watch hours of content of them like fixing toilets and like the dumbest shit like you know oh how to repair this like thing that I would only have if I lived in like New England area yeah. like but I'll still watch that that's the stuff I'll watch the m- the more like I guess to an extent i am learning something i might yeah. you know have i i definitely have learned a few things from watching those i finished watching uh turn washington spies this week mm, yeah excellent fucking show but that got me really interested in like because obviously it's based on history and i wanted to see how i wanted to see what the differences were so i ended up <coughs> reading it for a while on like where they took creative liberties with that show yeah uh which i think is pretty interesting so a lot of times when i'm watching stuff that's supposedly based on reality or like I like to look it up and see what. All right, moving on. Next question from Nexus. Uh, unless Chris Davis, did you have an answer? I was just gonna say I, I don't really fall into wiki holes that much, but you get me on Reddit sometimes, and I get lost for hours. Yeah, there's lots of holes to fall into out there. There's so many subreddits. There's, there's you know, there's YouTube holes, Facebook holes, 
Reddit Facebook, holes, fuck Facebook. porn holes. Hold on, Green, we've all been there. Green goddamn says, speaking of YouTube holes, Nolan, you killed hours of my time by recommending Joseph Anderson. Who the fuck's Joseph Anderson? <laughs> no idea. <laughs> how did I? How did I recommend? I, who the fuck is that? Nolan has recommended someone. He has no idea. Yeah, like, can you? Should I look up this person? <laughs> Um, yeah, you're going to have to. Moving on. Nexus asks, what is an obscure game you've played from your earlier gaming history that you love? Mine is Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Memories, a PS1 game that actually preceded the modern trading card game. Ooh. Let's see. Uh, I don't know how obscure this is. Nightmare Creatures was a big one for me when I was younger. Mm. Um, I don't think that game gets a lot of you know, airtime these days. Uh, but I played the sh- like I'd play that shit over and over and over again. Love that game. Uh, uh, I, I mean I've I've mentioned this game multiple times in the past, but Evo Search for Eden on the the SNES, it was like it it was like my first f- RPG platformer thing. Yeah. Built, but it's built around evolving your character and changing it based on the. I've never heard of it. The timer. No, it's, it's really <laughs> that would an make it obscure. Game. I think. What about you, Nolan? <sighs> Is Jade Cocoon considered obscure? It's not obscure, but... I remember playing the shit out of that. So I didn't play too many obscure games when I was younger just because I didn't have money for games. And so yeah. I only could afford to buy like one or two games. And so I obviously just did a little bit of research and went to the Funko Land and asked the guy what the best game was. Uh, but I mean, um, Lost in Blue, was that obscure? Was that a DS game? Yeah. Uh, original I, DS. I'd say that's. I think that's up there as one of the more obscure DS games. It's kind of. I enjoyed that. Although one they a didn't lot. make several of them, did that, they? That was like the survival game on the island, right? Didn't yeah. they make like okay, three yeah. of them? I don't know. I only ever played the first one, but I enjoyed it. Oh, I think they made at least two versions. One with <laughs> a boy and one with a girl. Gamer Beck played obscure on PS2. <laughs> hmm. Very obscure game. I remember that game. Uh, all right. Moving on from Zero Skies asks, if you were to create a main character, what would their color motif be? I'm a fan of purple and green. Like a like a protagonist in a game. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I like. Wouldn't you just pick your favorite color? Like I think blue. <laughs> like a, I like blue. Like a dark blue and maybe some like gray. I chose blue, Chris Davis. Like you can't pick blue. I said dark blue, okay. my, sir. My color would be gray and chartreuse. Isn't that what chartreuse is like a red, reddish? Mm, it's what like is a it? greenish, yellowish green. Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry if that was a boring answer, but I feel like you just yeah. kind of pick your favorite color. As long as, you do, like, you, you, as long as you don't have like those strong color contrasts, like the fucking blue and orange that you see in like every movie poster ever for the past yeah, I guess 20 so. years. They can work well together, though. Next question from uh, Heroes. No, no one. You can't do that did yet. He, did he yawn? No, that's the question. That was the question. <laughs> oh. uh, what was the first game you picked up? You picked up playing in 2018 oh is yes just what's the first game we decided to play in 2018 or what's yeah. like the first new game we're picking up no, i haven't played a new game the first game we've played in 2018 well for me it was uh persona 5 for sure well although i started that in 2017 i guess that doesn't really count i haven't started anything new in 2018 yet everything i've been playing i started in 2017 yeah for me it was i expect you to die that was the first game I played in 2018. I can tell you the first game that I'm going, the first new game that I'm going to be playing in 2018 inpatient. is the Inpatient. Called yeah. it. That comes out next Tuesday. Give me a dollar. Yeah. I mean, if if the betas count, then Metal Gear Survival will be our first new game, 2018. I'll the little free time I've had this past month is gone towards Battlegrounds, basically. Yeah. All right, moving on. Next question from Chai. Dragon Ball Fighter Z is looking like the greatest tribute to anime and video game form so far. If you could take any anime or Asian film and turn it into a game that looked just as good and with that much polish, what would it be and how would it play? Damn it, he had Chris is not allowed to say Battle Royale like Puzzle. I was just about to fucking <laughs> say that. God <laughs> damn you, Chai. Oh man, Chai uh, knows you. Chai um, knows. Um, he had you had to ask this because I'm not like I said, I'm not got huge it on anime. What? Got it. Rogue Galaxy, the game. Okay. Space Pirates. Okay. Outlaw Star. Wait, so I'm you'd, fine with that. You'd make an Outlaw Star game in the like style Rogue, of Rogue Legacy. Galaxy. Ro- yeah, Rogue Galaxy. So yeah, you would. It would be the Outlaw Star universe. Did you ever actually play Rogue Galaxy, or just dude? I played that game for like he played 30 a lot. Hours. Oh man, that was a good I, game. I owned that game from day one, and I never played it. Um. So yeah, you'd, you'd you know you'd be flying around space, you know, 
doing bounties and being chased after. But then the cool thing would be because you'd have to change up, but you'd be, you have like the grapple thing from from the, uh, the grapple Outlaw thing. Star because the the ship he like had a grappler yeah. ship. The whole point was it had these arms that were only made for fighting, but they would fucking like punch Wait, the other ships and Melfina? stuff. Melfina, Melfina was a that was her name. Okay. Yeah. okay. Man, I can't think of any fucking animes because I don't watch anime. You, you would have to do something really interesting with the the caster shells, though. No, that would be good. Like yeah, that that, that would definitely that. be. There would be like it'll, it'll, uh, there would, there would, they would have to add a little more where you get off the ship where you could like maybe have like a first person shooter kind of or something like third person like, like kind of thing. Is this specifically asking like? What... Is it anime or Asian film, Nick? You can choose like. like... Like yeah, one not, one example I would point I wouldn't to, consider myself a connoisseur of either of those things. Uh, but like, if he's asking like, what visually striking anime would you like to see recreated in did I say form? did I say Rogue Galaxy? I did mean Rebel Galaxy. My apologies. Oh, okay. I was thinking of Rogue Galaxy, which was like the that's level else fi- the level five RPG no, on no, no, PS2. Yeah. No, no, sorry. I was thinking of of uh, Rebel Galaxy, the one that came out. Was yeah. it three years ago? Two yeah. years ago? With now the, it make now okay. it all makes sense. I was all like, right. really? You played um, Rogue Galaxy? It's like you reach deep into your hat to pick that one out, Jesus. I mean, I think like a, one good example would be like a, a Trigun open world exploration game. You know, maybe like a Odd World. Maybe Odd World. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying to like I I take the anime and put it into like a game. Like I'm. I, I think it'd be interesting if you took Trigun, sure, and you gave it to Platinum. I guess it, it, like but instead almost... of being about killing enemies, uh-huh. it's about saving people and. Finding ways to not kill people. Red Dead? No. That's no. just killing people. <laughs> um, I would also want to see a, an Evangelion game that was uh, done in the style of XCOM. I think that'd be really fucking cool. I, I keep coming back to Sh- Samurai Champloo. That's, That's a true. really like really good looking anime. and I, Although I don't know what like what analog there would be for, you know, what video game would be a good analog for for Samurai. I can't even remember much about the show. I just remember I remember it looking really nice and having. There was good a music Samurai and... Shampoo game that came yeah, out over yeah. here, and it, but it probably wouldn't be what I would ideally pick for it. I don't know. We still haven't gotten like a truly great Ghost in the Shell game. No, we got that some... great movie. <laughs> uh, some I can't. Some anime that has a lot of fan service. Senran Kagura. I mean, there we go. <laughs> Bible uh, Black. I'd like to see that. Bible Black. No. What's Bible no, Black? No, you don't. It's that. It's that weird tentacle no. porn. Uh, oh, Full Metal Alchemist. That. He, oh yeah. Oh, there we go. Full Metal good, Alchemist. I mean, there isn't there already a Full Metal Alchemist. Yeah, there's been there a couple is. with me. Yeah, but, but I don't know if they've, they've quite good. found the sweet spot yet yeah. as far as like what game, like what style of game that could be. Yeah. I think I think a lot of these are a lot of these animes we've been mentioning would make would just make good like kind of open ended RPGs. Mm-hmm. Um. With like, All right. I mean, the, the, the Naruto Ubisoft games were pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, next question from Fudgy. Uh, I know it's probably closed, but I think fuck, it... Mary kill. Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh no. Oh my god. This is a good one too. Pass on this question. You don't want to read it. <laughs> you don't. Oprah, Rosie O'Donnell, Judge Judy. Yeah, maybe, <laughs> maybe I'll plead the fifth on that one too. I don't you know. You marry Oprah. <laughs> yeah. You fuck Judge Judy because you know she's got stories, and you kill Rosie. Wait, you fuck, you fuck Judge Judy. I don't know, man. I don't know if I could do it. Judge Judy seems like she'd. Yeah, just put she's her, got stories. Put her you judge gown over her head. <laughs> this is so bad. Yeah, and then whack this her. This is so bad. Whack her in the head with her gavel. Sci-fi says marry Oprah, fuck Judy, kill Rosie. That's what Chris Davis. Yeah, that's exactly. I mean, what I, I said. think that's kind of a universal answer. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. think just Oprah would be the best at giving you gifts on anniversaries. <laughs> oh yeah, marry that woman. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. <sighs> Another car this <laughs> year. Oh shit! You get a car. You get a car. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, all right. Uh, final question for the evening from uh, the Soup Nazi. Hey gang, you're each given the opportunity to take ownership of a multi-million dollar corporation or of your choice. It says or your choice, of your choice. Mm-hmm. If you accept, every handshake and fist bump you make will have a 50% chance of bonding you to the recipient forever. So this is this is a, uh, what do you call it? What's the fucking, never mind. So we have to like, it's asking if, we, would we do it? If that was the, mm-hmm. uh, now, what, would, what do you like, mean by like, like bond, bonding. like stuck together? Like, or if, I like... Did, if I gave you a high five, stuck together forever. Shit. 50-50 hmm. chance. 
You're, you're taking a gamble every time. You make jerking first of all, off interesting. First of all, I would do it, and then I would just have a strict no selfie. Or not, it's not selfie. No, like, fist bump, high five policy. Just what if I just wore gloves? What if I just wore boxing mitts? Or if you just don't even go into the company, just stay home. Telecommute. Yeah. You're the boss of your own company. You can telecommute whenever the fuck you want. Yeah, just don't get, like, yeah, do it and just don't mm. have a no, strict no. Well, first of all, wait, read the question again. Does it say, like, strictly, like, can you not touch it, people? If you it... accept every handshake and fist bump you make. Oh, yeah, don't shake anyone's hands, don't fist bump. Have a 50% chance, not 100%, 50%. Although I feel just... like... I feel yeah, like like, a, like I said, like I was saying, like Scarecrow says, wear fucking the Hulk gloves and just go around like that. I feel no, like he'd he have a hard time fist bump. Fuck it, you can get around it. High five. Simple I, as that. That's not a handshake. I feel or a fist like bump. I feel like you would have a hard time getting past a first date if you wouldn't even shake the girl's hand. You just take the Hulk gloves. Hi, and nice have, to meet you. Sorry, I don't, I don't shake hands. That's just, off to a you just rip roar and start right give there. Give her a little nice can, uppercut with the, no. the Hulk hands. But if it's a high five, you can Nick, make a you're... great impression on your date. You just, hey, we're on a date. You, yeah, we, the, you're fucking yeah. own a multi-million dollar company. Oh, that's true. Yeah. I'd get a second date. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if I had a multi-million dollar company. She wouldn't care if I'm with a Hulk glove. What? <laughs> God damn it, Nolan. I'm just kidding. That's horrible. That... I'm not certain if that's going to make it onto the final cut. Probably yeah, not. please cut that out. Oh, God. I, but then again. Freudian slip. I love my wife. <laughs> oh my god does she god. listen to the podcast sometimes she's like if she had already she's left sitting at work, work right now just like jaw on the floor if she had already left work, I get she'd to, probably you know what's us. funny i get to bust out i get to bust out the very the, this is the very rare occasion i get to bust out the sensor bleep good <laughs> <laughs> that highlight is not going on youtube uh, <laughs> i have access to the four player youtube account i will delete it uh Holy all right shit. So uh, that's all the questions for the week. Yep. That's oh, it. actually, I, I'll, I'll bring up Wait. one. It's something I saw on uh, on uh, Reddit. It was someone essentially asking a similar question to that one, and it was you. You're given you are given a million dollars. I think million dollars. Mm-hmm. Okay. And immortality. And immortality. What's yes. the catch? The catch is there's also a super intelligent snail. Oh yeah, no, no. We had this. I think this came up on a. I don't know if it was a snail. Didn't didn't this come up? And it's like constantly. It's if yeah, it chasing touches you, you. It kills you. Yeah. But like it's you know, it's always moving towards you. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I think you could we just did. have like a summer home and a winter home, and you're good. How do you know? What if the snail gets to you? It's a snail. It's not gonna. It's get a to fucking you. clever it's a snail. It's a super snail. intelligent gonna, snail. Wait, a super intelligent snail? Yeah. Still, it's got. It's gonna it's get on vehicles. It's gonna get on vehicles. Yeah, why not? Is it an immortal snail? Yeah, it's immortal too. You're both immortal. Fuck. Okay. Had me at the immortal thing. But is it is it impermeable? Yeah. Just because it can't can't die doesn't mean it can't feel pain. <laughs> I like how Scarecrow says snails are kind of fast. Actually, mm. can I just like? Are they? Are just they trap it in some Tupperware. Put put some uh, some salt in there just to torment it. Mm-hmm. Lock it up, seal it. But if it touches you, you're risking death doing that. I'm a millionaire. I could hire somebody to touch you're a not snail. Not a millionaire. For me. You're you don't have a million. That's the thing. Is it's not like you didn't get like ten billion dollars. You only got a million. I could hire a so guy. The moment for... you spend a dollar, you're no longer a millionaire. That's I can true. get. I can get Joe Schmo off the street to pick up a snail for like a dollar. And put it in a Tupperware box and throw it in the ocean. I feel like, yeah, you yeah. could get out. It's an. Did we not if it, you weigh it down? Did we mention it's an incredibly smart snail? <laughs> but what happens if, like, a fish comes by and bites the container and it pops open, and the snail slowly floats to the surface You're and then re- makes its way towards you? Odds slowly. are the fish is going to eat the snail. All right, it's I'm putting my foot die. down. This question is over. All right. Anyway, that's all the questions we got for this week. Thank you very much for your questions. We appreciate um, it, guys. But before we move on, it is time to announce our winners, winners of our Game of the Year so, and Highlight Survey. So it's one winner per survey? It is one winner per survey, yes. So if you if you participated in said survey, you, you get one entry per survey, right? Yep. You can pick any game up to a $60 value, and we'll gift that shit to you. Well, if you're a paid supporter of 4Player, you actually got two entries. Oh, shit. So, do you do you happen to know if either one of the winners was a paid supporter? I'm just curious. Uh, at least one of them was. Cool. Yeah, pays to 
to pays, pays to, to support pays to pay. All right, our <laughs> our highlight survey winner. Uh, his username is Rick Meister. Rick Meister. Yeah. Is that wait? Is that his name in uh, chat or? Uh, or? I believe that's his name. Uh, that's the way he wanted to read out. So okay. yeah, Rick Meister. This is Twitch and or Patreon name. Cool, Rick Meister. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and our game of the year survey winner. You might know this name. Pioscht. Pioscht. Where's Pioscht been? Shit. Pioscht has been around. Our very own Pioscht. Hang out in, in the Discord. He's yeah. there all day. I saw him in chat. But I'm, 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 I haven't seen him in chat in a little bit. So maybe Rick I just Meister, looked over his name. Rick Meister and Pioscht are our winners. Thank you guys very much for participating. Of course, we're going to do these drawings every single month. All you got to do is leave us a comment uh, on the show at fourplayernetwork.com. Or you can retweet our show every, every month as well, or every week as well when, when the tweet goes out. Uh, doing either one of those things gets you an, an entry into that month's drawing. Um, so yeah, we'll be in contact with Rick Meister and Pioche to get their their choices for their games. And of course, we'll be starting to put together all of our Game of the Year content here pretty soon, and you'll start seeing that trickle out in the next uh, week or two. Yeah. So keep your eyes peeled for that stuff. But now, we're going to wrap up the show as we always do. Four-player minute. Our hype, sweat, thank you, and fuck you of the week. Who would like to start us off? The person who usually starts us off is not here. I'm not ready. I'm not gonna lie. I... Chris Davis. I'm I'm winging it. I'm winging. It. I always wing it. Okay. I, I I guess I can start. Um, if we were to switch the overlay real oh. quick. Shut your mouth. Well, you didn't do it. Oh, there you go. Bam. Yeah, you when go. did the When did the mouse jump over to no one? When I was. He took it like, over. Yeah. When I was oh. ruling the world. All right. Oh. My hype this week. You're gonna hate it, Nick. But. My hype this week is for Metal Gear Survive, the beta specifically. Chris Davis, don't cover your mouth when you're I've, talking I've into been, a microphone. It sounds horrible. I've been watching some gameplay of you know various sites playing it, including a giant bomb. Yeah. And they're digging it, and it looks interesting with all the mechanics that they're putting into this game. I don't doubt they can make a solid game. For me, I, I, like, I, I, I'm like I sure the game's probably good. It's just more of, I don't want to support Konami. I'm just out of principle. I know you I don't want to support it. Konami out Not of principle Not to mention, I just think anything. it looks kind of dumb. Well, well you'll Personally. find out next week, hopefully, what our thoughts are about it. Yes, we'll talk about uh, it next I'm week. I'm going to play the beta. You know, I'll, I'll yeah. check it out. And next week, we're gonna, we are going to have an objective discussion about the game and nothing else about the game. Fuck you, I'm going to be subjective. No, no. No, I will, I will give you one minute at the beginning of that discussion I'm, to vent your feelings. It's gonna be fine, and then we are objective. It's gonna be fine. Okay, it's gonna be fine. Uh, my sweat this week is for obviously the the game of the year stuff, because every year it takes me about forty hours of editing, not including rendering time to make all this stuff, and it is just it is by the end of it, I just I need a vacation. Video games. Oh, your vacation. Oh, I mean, I wish there were video games that I really want to play right now that weren't just like fucking betas or or online shooters well, where people drop out of airplanes. Um, my thank you this week? I thank you. What am I thankful for? Am I thankful for anything? I don't care anymore. I'm a fucking cynical fuck. Say, I don't care. Uh, say what's your fuck you. My... my I, uh, you know what? I will Konami. give my thank you Konami. to I will give my thank you to the guys who are working on Overload. Uh, it's the it's the uh, a spiritual successor to, to Descent. They uh, released new content, and I learned that they're going to have a 15 level single player campaign. And uh, I've been waiting for them to really talk about that, but I need to get into that. And Carlos has been playing; he likes it. So <laughs> does he though? I, does I he? mean. Just kidding. Just Carlos kidding. and old school games, you know. Uh, am I fuck you this week? Fuck you goes to March. Just just the entirety of March. And all the fucking publishers that think that since it's the end of the fiscal year, let's dump all our fucking shit out in that time. Because good God, even if I have fucking spring break because I work at a college, doesn't mean I have all the fucking time in the world to play the 37 games that are coming out that month. Gotta pick and choose, man. Prioritize. It's, the last 10 days of March are going to fucking suck for us. Oh, actually, they're going to be quite fun, actually. No, they're going to be fun, but we're not going to be able to catch up and just... Hey, it happened... It happened... Uh, what was it in 2017? Was it uh, October? Fucktober? Yeah, Fucktober. Mm-hmm. No, this is yeah. this is Fucktober 2.0. Yeah. 
I feel like that was a good pr- primer. I'm ready. I'm ready for another round of just Fucking. getting fucked by just, <laughs> all these games. Yeah. Um, just get ready to bend over. All right. My turn. Cool. I'm going to wing it here. My hype goes to uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, The Frozen Wilds. Uh, I picked that up this week. It's it's uh, sitting at home. It's ready to go. Um, I kind of don't want to p- start playing it yet because I'm still playing Persona and Hollow Knight. But I also feel like those are both really long games. And I don't want to wait to start Horizon. So I might pop that in here in the coming week, weekend or something. Try that out for the next show. Who knows? But I'm really looking forward to playing more Horizon because I was recording footage of it this past week. And uh, I remembered how fucking much I love that game. It's fantastic. Not that it's going to be in my top ten or anything. Okay. Uh, my be the intro. My uh, uh, my fuck you of the week. I'm going to give to Morgana from uh, Persona for stopping me from doing just about anything that I want to do in the game. That's half the game. Yep. So far, so far, I only played about 22 hours. I'm sure it'll ease, she'll ease up a little. Bit. Sorry, he'll ease up a little bit. Um, but man, fuck you, Morgana. Um, my sweat goes to, um, you know, I'm going to give it to that, uh, Fable game because Fable has been on, you know, kind of off the rails for years now. And I, 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 there's things about that first game and even the second game that I loved and we just haven't really seen it. Like there's so much potential there and they haven't really done anything with it that was worth our time. So, uh, you're always taking a risk giving it to a new studio. I think that's a, trustworthy studio that could do some really cool stuff with it i'm excited for it but at the same time man that there's there's equal potential for that to just fail again um so yes i'm worried about the fable game the new fable game coming from playground studios um and my what did i say i said my sweat fuck you okay it's so my thank you of the week i'm gonna give it to chris davis for editing all of our game of the year shit as it always as it, as he always does so and uh, not biting all his heads off yeah yeah thank you for that you have been better about it this year i've been or, i guess i've been generous you, this year i guess you've been uh generosity is good it's a good look for you it seems Chris like Davis. you've been defeated and <laughs> I've, so i've given up on you fuckers yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's a lesson you should have learned years ago <laughs> it's it's like hurting cats except the cats are Why would you sedated. hurt cats, Chris Davis? Hurt ca- Why would you hurt Herd. cats? Duh. H-E-R-D. Why are you hurting cats? Oh. I hurt what you said. I'm going to bleep that out. It's going oh, to sound like it's Chris Davis is like, it's like fucking cats. Mm. Oh, God. Uh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Please, no. It. I don't need do the it. community to have any more memes about me. Oh, I'm going to do it. I'm going to put, yeah. It's like, happening. I swear to God. It's going to happen. I'm going to ruin your game of the year. All right. Video. My four-player minute starts now. My hype. Um, there's, you know, a, a few weeks in which there's no games, uh, new games, and I'm finally getting to catch up on my backlog, uh, getting, I, I finished Yakuza 0, I'm getting to play some Persona, I'm getting to play the Zelda DLC, I'm getting in some of that stuff I wasn't ever, wasn't ever able to finish in 2017, um, which leads into my sweat, which is 2018. Um, there's a lot of games that are going to be coming up hard and fast. Yes. And I, I don't want to fall into a situation where I did this year, where, in, sorry, that this year, uh, where I did in 2017, where in the middle of the year I fell into a rut and I just didn't want to play any of the games and I did other things. And then all of a sudden the end of the year came and a bunch of those games I didn't want to play, I picked back up and I'm like, holy shit, why did I put these down? These games are so good. And so I'm, I'm worried that something similar is going to happen, but I'll try to make that not happen um uh uh thank you uh, what am i thankful for i mean i can give my fuck you to the nintendo labia um <laughs> just straight away i'm pretty sure that's gonna be a bunch of bullshit i don't know like they might impress me but it's a preemptive fuck you um fair enough fair yeah. enough um i don't Better. Thank you. Not thankful for anything. Um, I guess I could say I'm thankful to uh, chat. Um, the other day when I was playing Zelda, a lot of them were being very uh, helpful 
Mm -hmm. I was, uh, you know, helping me figure out some stuff and almost, I want to say convincing me to, you know, play the DLC, but their, their, their excitement for me playing the DLC was nice. Cool. Yeah. Oh, I forgot to mention, I could have used my sweat as uh, Mass Effect Andromeda, uh, because I'm playing that on the feed now, and uh, there were just some people who just couldn't accept it, that I was playing it, and letting my, just couldn't, couldn't get over it. That I was playing it and even enjoying myself as well while mm-hmm. I was playing it. Well, there, uh, there were some that just there was a lot of negativity play. flying around chat while I was playing this game. Also, a lot of people it showing happens. support mm-hmm. um, and 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 glad that I was enjoying my time with it. Um, and there I'm, were some that were just wondering why you're not playing Hat in Time. I fully intend to keep playing with it, playing the game, um, but you know I'm a little worried because you know chat can be uh, a little overbearing sometimes, a little little uh, little judgy. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yep. Sometimes as needed. Sometimes, but not all the time. Anyways, that's it for our show tonight, guys. Um, thank you so much for being here, guys. Nolan, Chris Davis, Crispy. Oh, that's right. I mean, it is his home. Did <laughs> oh, I yeah. say fuck you to Nick and Crispy? Wait, Because Nick. we're now uh, almost three weeks into January, and we've yet to watch a Marvel film. Yeah, I know. <sighs> Dude, the first Sorry. week I tried to get us together, and y'all were just hey, being man. dicks about it. Why don't y'all just start with Avengers? Just fuck what? it. No, that's not how, how this works. Start with Avengers. That's, that's not how this works, Chris Davis. That's not the point. No, start with Avengers when it's the appropriate week for the Avengers. No, that's no, defeats that's the whole purpose. That the point is you watch all of them. You either watch all of them or it's not worth doing. Yeah, it could still happen. Anyways, okay. thank you guys so much for for listening for watching our show. 4playernetwork.com is, of course, our website. We'll be back next Thursday night, 8.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, for another show with hopefully all four people here. Should be. Uh, we're going to talk about the Impatient. We'll talk about Dragon Ball uh, F- Dragon Ball Fighter Z. Uh, maybe the Metal Gear Survive beta as well. Should be plenty of stuff to talk about next week, including whatever the fuck gets announced and happens between now and then. Uh, reminder, Discord, discord.gg slash 4player. Please join us there. We'd love to have you in there. Um, and if you'd like to support us on Patreon, you can find us at patreon.com slash four player. That's it for tonight, guys. Thank you for watching. Until next time. Good night. Bye. Goodbye.